Thank you very much, Katina. Man, what is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as the Midday Show. That is your girl, Adara. I am Sharif, and as per usual, we're gonna wait for everybody on to come on over from the other stream. I'm already talking to Klopp in the chat. I'm like, where is your boy Jurgen Klopp going? He announced today he is leaving Liverpool at the end of the year. My dad is already, I can see him crying uh, yes. from the phone. He's very displeased. I was telling Neil today, what is up everybody? Daryl Finch, we got Pitchbull, we got Bjorn, Fat Figure, my man, we got Pedro, we got Jameson Hog Rider, we got Matt Downey, we got James D, we got the Huang family, baby, and we got uh, Ben T, we got Arthur Grass, so, Andrew Chow, Roger or Orsiega. We got Blue Arrow, I do like that name. Sebastian, Hamster, D Rich, and we even have Adara in the chat, believe it or not. She is already in there. Yep. Uh, what's up, my man, Dan, the man Emmons? Uh, been seeing him back in the chat. Please just punch. How are you this morning? Yeah, I'm good. I was just in the chat um, there because Andrew Ditter was saying the midday show was not mid, and I had to um, both thank oh, him that, and that. congratulate that pun. So that was why I was <laughs> in the chat. You were not incorrect there. Um, yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Um, I'm looking at some earnings plays. AXP, it might be a little bit late to this um, party. The American Express may have taken off without me. <laughs> but I do, like, th this uh, bull flag breakout was fabulous. I was watching this kind of break out into the 203 at the big right. desk, and I was like, we'll see if this is still viable by the time I get here. It was not, but that's okay. okay. We're going to find more opportunities. I, I really uh, enjoyed something Neil had to say with regards to those uh, the trades on SQ, where he was like, you know, I'm taking these trades because, like, it didn't go as well yesterday, right? And I think that's the attitude I'm trying to have today. I had a very rough trading day yesterday. Um, as was as was documented here with that unfortunate PayPal miss. But you know what? We're just going to brush off the dirt off our shoulders. Shout out to Jay-Z. Keep on going and find some trades. I like, I like AXP. Um, I have Levi on watch just because that nice bounce off the bottom. This is another earnings-related name, but Levi is more likely bouncing because of its news with its um, plan to cut some of its corporate 10 to 15% because right. those earnings were abysmal, to say the least. So I think that's probably what's giving uh, Levi this little boost. Okay. Um, keeping an eye on some stuff. I know you are in a trade. Yes, we're doing tech. Tesla right now, we got long here at one at VWAP, essentially. Okay, so what we're looking for, I'm having trouble with this trade. I'm a little concerned about it. If we can go to the chart, please, uh, because this 185 level, guys, chart, please. Um, this 185 level was resistance yesterday, uh, sorry, support uh, until it flat bottom broke. We took that trade and it is now acting as that level of resistance. So we were able to get our beak wet there through the break of the half dollar. However, it is, you know, in a bit of a consolidative mood, a bit of a topping tail candle right now on TSLA as uh, the Fuge comes back into 17.6. I'm going to be very careful uh, with this trade. I've already got my out. What's going on there, Katina, man? 30 handles in the money on? The, on the NASDAQ. My man over there is taking uh, the NQ short at uh, that top right there as it tanks all the way back down. Yeah, it, Q's at sorry, correction. Triple Q's short 4610. Four, sorry? 42610. Thank you, Katina, man. I apologize about that. All right. So we're going to let this, uh, this Tesla trade simmer and then we're going to talk today about some more candlestick patterns because that's what we are up to at the moment, all right? We're gonna talk about some more advanced candlestick patterns. We've been talking about some of the easier ones earlier this week. Let's start off with a couple of dojis. So what's going on here? Where's my dragonfly doji? Oh, my dragonfly doji has disappeared. Oh, that's right. Okay, here we go. Gravestone doji, baby. First one, let's get to work. The Gravestone Doji, as you can see. Guys, what's going on? <laughs> All right, yeah, no worries. Okay, he had a Dara's chart up there. Uh, we got the Gravestone Doji up here. Now, what we're, what we're talking about here, very interesting pattern. It's basically, it indicates a potential bearish trend reversal. Bearish trend reversal. That's all you need to know about that one. No, you need normal. Uh, Gravestone Doji is generally formed at the top of the price chart, as evidenced there on uh, this example. The traders interpret this pattern as a sign to take a bearish trade on the underlying stock. So here are some of the deets we're looking for. It essentially tells us here that buyers were trying to take 
uh, the market higher, but eventually sellers took control of the market away from the buyers. The long wick on the upper side of this candle shows that buyers have lost momentum. So that's kind of the opposite of what we've been talking about when we talked about bullish dojis from the bottom on the on a downtrend back into the uptrend, exactly the opposite of that. And you can see that reflected in the price action. I mean, you are obviously trending up here aggressively with six green candles in a row. And then you put this obvious reversal candle here because the bulls were able to push the price to a new high. But the bear said, no, you don't. And they brought it back very much near the open. So the open and the close price on this gravestone doji are very, very close, if not almost the same, okay? So it is almost without an embody, and the body, uh, however small it is, is always very much at the bottom end of the, the candle. It may or may not have a lower wick. The lower wick, if there is one, will be super small. And this one can be spotted, like I said, on the top of, of a price chart, a candle having a long wick on its upper side um, with the price opening and closing at nearly the same level. Uh, the pros of this kind of uh, candlestick pattern are that it signals a potential bearish trend reversal and it can also easily be identified uh, on a naked chart owing to its very um, unique looking characteristics there. Uh, the cons of this candlestick pattern are that it can generate false trading signals and the formation of a gravestone doji has become very rare. So uh, the analysis here is that these are not found that often in the wild and if they are, they're not found in the area where you're looking for them. You're looking for them on the top of a price chart. You wanna see it near the peak, uh, uh, the crest, right? So that the subsequent price action can be to the downside. Adara, any questions or comments? Yeah, no, it's interesting because I, I think this one, the, the key thing here is just the like the way it forms. Like we've talked about similar kind of candles, right? But I think this one, you really need it at the peak of that uptrend mm -hmm. and then uh, seeing that move to the downside. Yeah, I think context for this one seems to be very yep. key. Also there, um, I'm seeing some mentions. Gravestone Joji at um, 9.30 a.m. Wick today says Louie. A couple other people mentioning this one as well. I don't know what time frame this is on, but we will take a look here. Um, 9.30 uh, yeah, if anyone wants to clarify the time right now, I have the five minute and I kind of see what you mean. Yeah, we did have that, but it, I, I wouldn't really call this like a grave. Let me see the what, maybe, maybe it's the one minute at 9.30. But yeah, if anyone, I'd love, you know, if anyone sees like the, the right time frame on this. Oh, um, Thomas W. saying Micron one minute right now, more or less. Um, so yeah, we'll take a look because we like to find examples sure. in the wild, Go right? Sure, for it, yeah. Um, well, you can't see the top of your oh, price yeah. there. You need to, okay, like, I'm yeah. gonna, there you go. There we go. But it's not there. Yeah, not I'm not. I see anyway. I'm not seeing it, but I see what you, like you know. It's the mm -hmm. same kind of look, but that would be that look sure. plus a gravestone doji. So I see basically the idea like we're kind of running out of those. Um, buyers are losing steam. Uh, they have one last hurrah and then they fall. <laughs> I like yeah, that. I think I would. Last yeah, hurrah. I think that's a cool look. Thank you for there. Yeah. yeah. And Alan Sebastian, what time frame would you suggest you look at this candle uh, for a day trade? Look, uh, Alan, we've been talking about the uh, the use of. Everything, the chart patterns, candlestick patterns, indicators, uh, all sorts of indicators. You can use them on whatever time frame you want. For the most part, they are fractal. However, you need to consider that the lower down on the time frame you go, so if you go from the four hour to the five minute, you are increasing the failure rate of whatever you're using, whether it's a VWAP, the moving average, uh, well, VWAP's always the same, um, moving average, um, RSI, MACD, it doesn't matter. The lower down on the time frame you go, the higher the failure rate is. However, it is usable on any time frame, okay? Hope that helps. Next one we go. Oh, that was the like and sub. Well, do like and subscribe, baby. Uh, the next one we go is the Dragonfly Doji, and that's what it looks like there. And what is this candlestick all about? Let's talk about this. This one indicates a potential bullish trend reversal. So it's almost the opposite of the previous, the Gravestone Doji. The Dragonfly Doji is where the body is very much small and closes at or near the top of the candlestick pattern, exactly the opposite of the previous one, okay? The Dragonfly Doji is generally formed at the bottom of a price chart. So whereas we saw it previously with the gravestone at the top, just imagine this is flipped down, you're gonna see this candle at the bottom. So it would be somewhere like this with a V-shaped uh, V shaped retracement, okay? Traders interpret this pattern as a signal to take a bullish trade in the underlying instrument. The Dragonfly Doji tells us that sellers were pushing the market 
to the lower side, but eventually buyers said, no you don't. And uh, sellers lost control because of the increased buying pressure. And this long wick over here the on the lower side of the candle shows the strength that the buyers had to be able to push that price all the way back up off its lows and say, no, uh, uh, we're going back up and this is where we start, okay? So the Dragonfly Doji can be spotted at the bottom of a price chart. Again, you will have to look for a candle having a long lower wick or the, a, a, lower, a long wick on its lower side uh, with the price opening and closing at nearly the exact same level, okay? The pros of this Dragonfly Doji are that it gives traders an early signal of a potential bullish trend reversal, and it can also be identified quite easily owing to its very unique look over here on a chart. The con of this uh, particular um, candlestick pattern is that it can easily generate a false signal, and this one, much like the Gravestone Doji, is, seems to be appearing less and less often in the wild. So, you know, try not to misinterpret uh, similar looking candles for this one. Try to make sure that it's fitting all the little pieces there, okay? So that it's number one in, uh, for the dragonfly, it is, it, you know, it manifested on the bottom of a downtrend and the subsequent candle after the dragonfly was an up candle. Conversely, for the gravestone, what you wanna see is you wanna see it preceded by an uptrend, and then the following candle after that is a candle to make a new low, okay? So any questions there, Adair, for It seems like one of those that I think would be hard to find in the wild, so I appreciate you saying that, because yeah. the first thing I saw when I looked at these notes, and I've heard of the, the dragonfly doji, but I think actually seeing it, you're like, you know, definitely one of those ones that it's nice to watch out and maybe even more significant when you see it because they're rarer, right? Yes. Which might be, I mean, I don't want to like necessarily speak to that because who knows, but I think it'd be interesting, especially if something's rarer, if you see it in the wild, then you can be like, hmm, oh, yeah. this could be significant. We don't see these very often, yeah. right? It's like when you see a rare animal, it's like a rare candlestick pattern <laughs> in the wild. So I think, I think that could be kind of an interesting uh, food for thought there just to kind of munch on there. Uh, but yeah, I think that that that's that's a cool that's yeah, a cool look, and cool I, I look. appreciate like you know mentioning that these ones are rare because it gives yeah, you yeah. think about when you see one. Yeah, because if you if you know they're rare, then you're you're less inclined to be like oh oh you know what I mean. Yeah. Here is one you're gonna like think about it a little bit more. I like that. Yeah. All right, guys. The next three outside up. Don't come at me for the names, okay? I mean, I, I didn't make any of the names. I don't know what they mean exactly. Obviously, the three is owing to the three candlestick pattern here, but. Uh, and the up, obviously, is we're going up. I don't know why it says outside, though. I don't really get it. The three outside up candlestick pattern is a bullish reversal pattern. It's important that we characterize these into groups. This one is a bullish reversal pattern, which is formed at the bottom of the price chart, okay? So typically, what we're gonna see in this particular case, where you're gonna see these three bad boys show up, is on the bottom end of the price chart, so in a trough area, okay? The three, upside, the three outside up pattern are formed when the first candle is bearish, as you denoted over here, followed by a long bullish candle, which covers the bearish candle from both sides from top to bottom. So it's almost like an engulfing candle where the entire red candle's price action is engulfed by the subsequent green candle's price action, okay? And the third candle, the third green candle breaks the close and ab above the second candle's high. So the closing print for the third candle is above the previous second candle's high. And you can see that the closing print on a, a green candle is up here, and this is the high of the middle candle or the second green candle, okay? So that's what it looks like there. The three outside up pattern is a strong bullish pattern, like I said, which indicates that the bears tried to take the mar market further down, but were defeated by the immense buying pressure of the buyers. This is very hyperbole, I love it. Uh, this pattern also signals a potential bottoming out of the market. So the candlestick pattern is spotted, typically, like I said, at the bottom of the chart, spotting this pattern is, I don't wanna say very easy, but this is the, the kind of the giveaway over here. It's kind of like a reverse pregnant woman. Remember that pregnant well, I was gonna say, Harame it like thing? Yeah. yeah, so it's like the opposite of it. This is the woman, but she's looking left instead of looking right this time, <laughs> like, right? Yeah. She's a, like, it's a what direction she's looking. Right, and it's also an engulfing candlestick pattern, right? But we're not calling it the engulfing candlestick, but it is by, by definition. So here are the rules for these three candles. The first candle, has to be a red bearish candle, and the trend preceding the red candle has to be down and to the right. 
The second candle has to be a strong bullish candle, which covers both the high and the low of the first red candle. And the third green candle resumes the trend by continuing up and its closing print has to be above the high of the middle or second green candle over here. Any questions or comments there? You know, I'm saying it's interesting because I like yeah. that we have that second candle, same kind of idea, like you said, as the bullish engulfing, but it's yeah. almost like we have a confirmation candle. So the bullish engulfing is just the two candles, but the three outside up is like, hey, you have a bullish engulfing and yeah. you've got its like friend to confirm like, hey, there is maybe more movement on the upside, right? Exactly. And that also could be like, if you're in a short and you see that bullish engulfing, you already kind of get a little bit skittish. And then you see that second one and you're like, Au revoir, sayonara, <laughs> right? So I think sometimes, like I said, where, what I find these interesting is instead of like purely using them as ways to enter a trade, they can also be like, you know, do you wanna, maybe, I guess, do you wanna stay in the trade as well? Mm -hmm. it, can, it can give you some food for thought there while you're and in you, the And can position. I also comment about this? And I, I, I think that you were saying this uh, with respect to one of the uh, candlestick patterns that looked similarly to this yesterday. So the first two over here are your like, the, when you see the red candle form and then the engulfing green candle subsequent to it form, that should put you on the lookout for what the third green candle is gonna do. So you're, this is kind of your warning. Once this candle forms and then you get a bullish engulfing candle at the bottom of a, of a price action move, so the trough, then you're ready. You're like, okay, what's the next green candle, the third candle gonna do? And as soon as it closes above the high of the second candle, that's kind of your, uh, your go-to. You're like, all right, now I'm in. So this over here, these first two candles kind of put you on alert. You're ready for it. You're like, okay, maybe this is gonna be the three outside up. And so that's kind of how I would look at it. All right, after that is the three inside down, exactly the opposite of the three outside up. We have the three inside down. And this is exactly like I said, the opposite of the other one. It is a strong bearish pattern, which shows that bulls tried to take the market further up, but lost control against the immense selling pressure of sellers. This pattern also signals a potential top that could be in the making. So it is, you know, you can look at it as a, an entire, not just a micro reversal, but a macro reversal. The candlestick pattern is spotted uh, easily at the price, at the top of a price chart, spotting three inside down candle pattern um, can be quite, you know, simple to do on the naked chart over here. The pros of this candlestick pattern is that it is a strong reversal pattern, which has a high probability rate of success um, then some others. The cons of it though, obviously are that it requires some technical tools uh, to, uh, to, so you're supposed to, you're in, ideally you're supposed to use it with either an IR, RSI or a MACD um, and also has um, some tendency to fa uh, generate false trading signals. So be on the lookout possibly here for false trading signal is what I would do is I'd be looking to see whether, you know, this red candle here that forms subsequent to the middle red candle is uh, then uh, if basically whether we continue to, uh, downtrend after that or whether a new green candle is formed. If a new green candle is formed to make a new high, I think that, you know, that might be your signal that this is a, a, a fake out. So that is the look there. Kind of uh, the same thing as the three outside up, but just in the opposite. And last but not least is the bullish kicker. I like this one. Yeah, this one is a good one. This one to me yells uh, bullishness because of a gap in between these two candles over here. So the bullish kicker pattern is um, a candlestick pattern where the where a bearish candle is immediately followed by a strong bullish candle. So they, this is the bearish candle that in which they're talking about, and this is the bullish candle in which they're talking about. The bullish kicker pattern forms when the bullish candle gaps up, breaks, and closes above the previous bearish candle's high. So what we need here is obviously if there's gonna be a gap up um, and a close, then there is gonna be some distance between the opening print of the bearish candle and the opening print of the bullish candle. And that's what we're looking for here. So you're looking for this to be um, you're looking for the placement of this candlestick pattern at the bottom of a trough, okay? So it should be troughing out here and it should be a trend reversal. The bullish kicker pattern also indicates that buyers have made a comeback with a strong desire to push the prices further up. This pattern also represents the quick sentiment shift of the market participants. 
uh, can be spotted on a naked chart quite easily owing to the gap that is formed there between the bearish and bullish candle. The pros of this pattern is it's a very strong pattern and also supported by strong amounts of volume. So that's an, one of the other important confirmatory indicators here, whereas we were talking about MACD and RSI for the three inside down and three outside up pattern. In this particular case, you're looking for outsized volume to coincide with the gap up between the bearish candle and the bullish candle. The cons of this pattern are the, uh, is that it does not occur most of the time and beginner traders can confuse this pattern with a gap up pattern. We haven't talked about gaps yet. Maybe we'll get to that next week actually because there are, there are three types of gaps we can talk about. There's an initiation, continuation and exhaustion gaps. And this one here sometimes is confused by novice traders as an initiation gap. And that is not it. It is a bullish kicker pattern. Any questions or comments, Adair? You know, I like that. And I think, like, too, I like that we're talking about, you know, ways to kind of confirm and, and cross-reference in these. Like, with all other patterns, it's nice if there, you know, there's some kind of indicator, some kind of confluence. Shout out to Obi. Um, and I think that that's a cool look, too, because it just shows, like, A, the force of the move. And at the for that, like, massive move is confirmed by volume, especially yeah. a reversal. I think that, that would be, you know, definitely... A, a huge sign, I think, it's definitely something to, to keep an eye out on if you see it, right? Yes, ma'am. Also, I guess that, too, you'd probably want to wait for, for confirmation, for sure, I would say, was the main thing there, too. Also, oh, I just want to address this. Uh, earlier, Alison Mulcahy explaining why the names for that three outside up and oh, two, like a three it. outside in, uh, saying um, the red candle is inside the green, the leg, uh, the green leg outside up. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. Yeah, thank you so much for clarifying that. And sorry, it took us a moment to uh, to get to that comment there, but much appreciated. Um, yeah, the market is is doing market things right now. Um, I you know I can briefly kind of talk about yeah, uh, this Nvidia it. trade. So this was uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my, my PayPal sad face for this a little bit, but the, you know I say that, but we actually had um, this was like half successful and I say that's so why I really like this entry I have to say this bottom wick I noticed we had some support I was like I just want to get in right at that uh, 614 uh, 50 if I can so I did it shot up took out half my profit a dollar and should probably take in the rest out of that 615 but I wanted to wait till 616 50 because I wanted to get it around where we had that resistance earlier alas it was not meant to be alas. I just could not get filled on the way down I got out um, a little bit lower than I wanted but then I made this other trade because I noticed hey we're, we're kind of seeing a little bit of a hold here at that 614 um, Got in a little bit higher than I would have liked to, about 61430-esque, and then got out um, around that 6, uh, 1470. So pretty small trade, but basically just the whole, you know, we didn't, we're net negative on, the, on this name. And again, uh, paper trading, because I'm still in the sim here, uh, because of this move to the downside. But honestly, you know, look, I, I'm just happy, like I said, just trying to kind of continue to get back in trades. When you fall, get back up. I like and it. I think that was the issue. This was unfortunate, but I'm not going to let it discourage me. And I think that's the biggest thing is kind of, we talked about mental, uh, men, <laughs> you know, the mental aspect of trading in the past. And I think part yeah. of that that I get kind of stuck on is how do you how do you get over your bad trades? And we talk, you know, like right. you want to be too hard on yourself. Like I was a little bit hard on myself earlier this week. And certainly that PayPal situation yesterday was a bit of a rough movement. But it, each trade is going to be different. That, you know, and then no two trades are going to be alike. And so you can't go into that assuming just because you had one rough trade, it's right, going to keep going course. that way. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a big thing. I, I And maybe that's self-explanatory, but I think learning through experience is a huge part of this too. Um, Mr. Mem saying, pa 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 poker face. And I would agree. Uh. That's one of the biggest things you have <laughs> while trading, especially because trading can be a, bit, a little bit gambly there as well, Lady mm, Gaga. Um, also, I really like AXP. I did have a failed AXP long earlier, but I think we could have a, an American Express back to the upside because look at this area of support that we're like, look at this. Well, I'm on the one minute. That's strange for me. Let's go to the five minute. There we go. Um, we had the bounce, 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 move to the upside, maybe another bounce at this uh, 202. I shall keep my eye open. I shall watch the book. I kind of like this position, I have to say. It could, I'm not a position, I'm not even in it. I like the concept of this position is probably a better way to put it. I got involved here earlier because we had a bit of support of that 204 and I thought we were going to continue have another leg, leg up to the upside. We broke below my area of interest. I said sayonara and I got out of dodge there. But I do, um, I, I want to be cognizant that this isn't like a head and shoulder type move. But again, like the biggest thing, you know, anticipate, uh, participate, don't anticipate. Exactly. I'm trying to be a bit more decisive in my moves here uh, on this trading. And even that, like even if you take part of the position out of that 270 area where we had that previous um, interest in that previous range, I think that could be of interest. So without further ado, we're going to get a little beak, uh, not beak wetter, a toe dipper ready for a potential point of interest here <laughs> on this trade. <laughs> There we go. I love it. Synonyms galore. Harry Lou, great question. Sharif, 
for the bullish kicker pattern. Is the reversal and the gap sufficient to trigger entry or do you need two confirming candles that close up for the previous, uh, for the previous close of the candle. So here's what I'm gonna say, Harry. So what you're looking for here, obviously, number one is a downtrend. And then you're looking for uh, the final candle in the downtrend to be uh, a red candle. And then subsequent to that red candle uh, bottoming there, you're looking for a gap up between it and the subsequent green candle. Now, you, what you're asking about is, do I need to see continuation to the high side? Ideally, but uh, the, I think, the important question to ask is here, if this is a failed break on the bullish kicker, where is your stop? Personally, my stop is gonna be below the open of the bearish uh, reversal candle over here. So over here, this is where we opened up, because uh, it's a red candle, the top is the opening. If it dips any price action over here from the right upward, dips below this black line, that's where I'm getting out. I hope that helps, but that's what you're looking for here. You're looking for number one, the red candle at the bottom, subsequently uh, a green candle to gap up. Obviously, you're looking for the continuation to move forward uh, and up into the right, but if it doesn't and ends up being a failed pattern, your stop should be the break of the low over here on this candle because the gap is what's specific to this pattern. So you can say, Sharif, well, why don't you put it below the low of the, cre of the trough? Why don't you put it below the, this red candle over here? Because uh, you always talk about you know, making new lows, and if it makes a new low, then the pattern is, um, is, is invalid. Well, yes, ideally, but that's not what we're looking at here. The gap is what's, you know, what's important in this particular pattern. And if that gap is filled between this green candle and that red candle, to me, that signals an invalid uh, candlestick pattern and I would, uh, I would get out. All right, I'm long um, PayPal, 61.58. I'm gonna explain why in a second, but we just wet our beak there through the break of 70. Uh, we were sitting at 69s, because what is life without whimsy? We're gonna wet our beak here again, Adara, at the three quarter dollars, should we make our way up there? One and two thirds percent of the good now is PayPal. Let's look at the five minute look on PYPL. This one kind of, look, we know what happened yesterday with PayPal, that big boy, Hwadunk, off that 64. Now we're looking for a partial gap fill, right? We've been yapping about gaps. Now what we get here possibly is a move into 62 and three quarters because that is the low of yesterday, right? So if we're looking to fill the gap between today's price action and yesterday's Hwadunk, I'm looking for a possible move uh, into 62 and three quarters. However, there are a plethora of different resistance levels on our way into 62 and three quarters. The first and the foremost for me is gonna be that whole dollar level at 62. We need to clear that with vigor and on a closing print for me to stay interested in this name. Where I'm wrong, the out for me is gonna be the break of, of the low of this consolidation area. That takes us into 61 and a third. So that's where I'm looking there on PYPL. If it breaks down below 61 and a third, my out, um, it, my, my fate is sealed on that. Uh, I will get out there as my stop is already in place, but I'm looking for a possible move up if we really get going here into 62 and three quarters. That's my thinking there on PYPL. Let's talk about some of the other small cap gappers du jour while we have the uh, the big six up up here. And by the way, the two right, the two. Uh, can you take my picture off Ram Ram so I can uh, share? Thank you, appreciate you. Uh, the two right charts over here, the top is the NQ, the bottom is the ES, but what I'm looking at are these six over here. And these six are gonna be my small cap gappers that we're gonna uh, talk about on the day. The biggest, the baddest of the small cap gappers on the day is CRBP. 207% up on the day, was up way more, multiple halter to the high side, a 33 and two thirds high a day. We're dancing right now just a smidge above 25, actually a smidge below 26, we're in the high 25s. Let's look at the one minute look over here on uh, CRBP because I wanna show you how many times this has halted. So the first halt we got on this bad boy was right at that 934, right after the bell rang. We gapped up, we halted up, that's one, that's two, three, four, five halts to the mm. high side right? No halts to the downside on CRBP. The details on this, you asked. Nobody asked, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. 
4.4 uh, million share float on CRBP. There is a headline. It's a, dub, it's a cancer therapy shows promise in the early stage, says this headline over here. In case you're wondering, Corbis Pharma doubles as cancer therapy shows promise in early stage trial. That's all we really need to know about that as technical traders. We just want to know there's a headline. With respect to short float, let's bring in the trusty trade idea software, find out if there is um, you know, an important short float, CRBP. And we have a negligible short float. Less than 1% of the float is shorted, 0.9%. That could be up to two weeks old, though. So, you know, I don't want to say take it with a grain of salt, but you just you need to be aware that it could be, uh, it could be uh, bogus. Okay, PayPal is pumping here. We got a top right now of 61.89. We got another beak wetter there at uh, the $75, 75 cent area. We're gonna put another beak wetter at 85 pennies. We'll take, uh, we'll take those bad boys incrementally there as it moves back up into 85. The other one, Adara, RVSN. How many times this week are we gonna talk about RVSN, Adara? Infinite. How many times are we gonna talk about it? Yeah, it, Every always. day, this is pumping, Ram Ram. Did you see this, Ram Ram? Have you seen this chart, Ram Ram? Look at this. Look how many times I've had to put in the ticker. That's how many times I've, we've been looking at this. Every day, it seems to gap up. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? It got, I mean, it started out January 22nd, which was Monday, sub $1. It, it started its life out at, like, no, sorry, that's incorrect, like a dollar and a third. Now we broke through 10 bucks today. Uh, and we got about 1040. It's a bit of um, a resistance level though on our VSN at this level, Adara, because we did crest out at that exact level yesterday around 1215. We got into that 1040, 1050 area. We're right back there again. So we haven't broken through yesterday's high on this bad boy. Keep your eye on it. It is a multi-day runner. It really hasn't been um, a bamboozler. It's been mostly mostly consistent now look look at yesterday we topped out there like i said midday and then we trended down the rest of the day so try to get this while it's making higher highs and higher lows try not to find you know like a vwap dip yesterday it didn't work on our vsn unless you really share got in with big boy size there to take to scalp otherwise I, I feel like it was a bit of a bamboozler yesterday on the way down but on the way up it was uh not bad not bad at all what are you looking at over there um, yeah, I think yeah, I think that that PayPal's nice. And maybe beak waters that it's like you're getting, taking little withdrawals there. And <laughs> uh, I guess PayPal doesn't do that, so that's kind of a weird analogy. But that's all good. might be a more fitting analogy for the trade I am in. I like that we're both in finance trades. Also, I just realized that because I am in AXP. Um, and AXP, I, I will admit, I was probably a little bit impatient with this entry. I probably got in a little bit too high. Um, I should have waited for that 202 to hit. Got in at 202.20. I do like this area of interest, though. Getting, uh, I will be wetting my beak. Uh, or taking uh, whatever, whatever, what have you, whatever idiom you'd like to use. I'll be getting a part of the position around this 202.60 area. And I want to keep a piece for the dream because I think that dream like also it. will probably um, be around that 204.50 where we had that earlier peak. Why did I get in here even though we, we did sell off a little bit? We've held this 202 like a glove. 202 was that range from once we had another breakout earlier. I'm about a $2 or $3 breakout. So I do want to be conscious of that. If we see it decides to break below this range, because we did test and we held that 201.50-ish area pretty well. So I'm going to stay there. We just got a little bit of a push to the upsides. Hopefully there's a little bit more in um, the American Express to the upside here today. That would be, um, that would be the goal. Still watching NVIDIA after um, I dip my toe um, a little bit in this one earlier, but we're, we're kind of chopping and turning at a level that I, I want to be a little bit patient for. Uh, this 613, 614.50-ish area, so there definitely are some opportunities there if I were to scalp, but this one a little bit wild for my taste. I know you described in video last week, Sharif, is not for the faint of heart, oh. and um, as someone whose heart was a little bit tested by this one earlier, <laughs> I, want to be, I want to be a bit patient there. Also got my first, the beak has been dipped, or wet, or what have you, in um, American Express. Thank you for the bang button there. I'm so happy with that. Um, we're gonna keep seeing how this goes. We did kind of fall down a little bit from that area, so I will pay attention, because this range, that's why I got it out there, because this range, I think, is pretty key to this stock. But like I said, until we break out of this range, I'm down, and actually, I might reload a little bit, because this is my big thing this week. I'm trying to, trying to learn a little bit, practice new trading skills every week. This week, the big thing was reloading. I've been trying to reload some positions, and that's not always worked out, but you know, if I do it in a way where it makes sense, because we said with DCA, that have to be planned. Yes, For me, I'm just really the goal is just taking DCAs 
A at levels I like, so uh, I got it a little bit early here, but if we get back to that 202 in a way that I like, I might add there. And then B also, like looking at the book, are we holding this level or are we just gonna fall down or, or, or rise up if it's a short and I'm adding to a position that's not gonna be fruitful, right? So I think being conscious of that and if I do that one, two kind of check there, uh, one, two step, then, then I feel confident uh, DCAing. So I think just another, another aspect of me trying to um, add an arrow to my trading quiver to borrow a Sharifism and, and try, to, try to grow a little bit. Ram Ram uh, has a video she would uh, like to show. Ram Ram, you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Uh-oh, what's hot, Tesla? Oh, it's Who's earning. it smashing into? <laughs> Where is it going? Why, come back. Why is he sliding down? <laughs> <laughs> Where are his brakes? Come back. This is Elon to the Tesla stock. Come back. <laughs> Elon, ma. Yeah, yeah, right, right around there. Um, okay, well, that's a hell of a move down. I love how there's, there's PayPal there. PayPal's hiding from <laughs> Tesla. Why would PayPal do that to Tesla? That's not nice. Well, I think just like they both had like, And I like how Kathy Wood is like on her way down too with Tesla, the poor woman. Um, uh, we're kidding, of course, guys. Obviously, Ka Kathy Wood, uh, you know. Kathy was fine. Her. Yeah. She's, she's great. I love her. The heavyweight. Yeah, that's funny. I enjoyed that. Also, sorry, Eric, um, I'll pass it back to you. I just want to look yeah, at yeah, Amara for Eric. Amara uh, is going to the moon with um, a plethora of exclamation points. And let's look at, oh my gosh, yeah. I'll, I, I'm doing, uh, like, look at this. We... I'm gonna try, you know, I try trend lines. I try to dabble in trend lines. I still need to practice. I think Vin saying in the chat, I'm drawing the trend lines on a line chart. I need to work on that. Um, but yeah, for right now, I'll just show like this. We have this scope of base here at the 17, 2, 17, 3 area, higher low, or sorry, higher high, higher high. Swoop to the upside. Mm -hmm. I know with some of these crypto names, charting is less important than what is Bitcoin doing. Um, but I think the chart is still also a nice look here oh, yeah. on Mara. We had a nice spring bounce to the upside here. Started our marathon, I guess, at 1030. Uh, really nice look here for Marathon Digital. Oh, higher highs, wow. higher lows. I just got that. I was focusing. Well, because we always call it Mara. Like, a lot of <laughs> things you don't refer to is solely by their tickers. But Mara, we do, because there's also Marathon Oil, like MRO. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. So that's what, you know what I mean? Yes. I, I feel like for myself, at first I was kind of like, but yeah, Marathon Digital, um, Mara, this one getting a nice push. Also, AXP testing its range and testing my patience a little bit here. Um, I try to dip to the lower end of that range. Like I said, that decisive to a 150 break is where I will have to say au revoir. But if we hold this level, because we did have this nice bounce back earlier, I may, I may um, add to this position here. Um, so yeah, that's also, um, yeah, that's kind of my look here. But Mara looking really strong. Congrats to everybody in Mara. I know Sean was in Coinbase earlier. Yep. So hopefully making some coin on Coinbase. Shout out like to the sticky note, which you can find on his Twitter. Yeah. yeah, it was heavy. Heavy in the money on that one. Guys, we just broke 17.6 on the Fuge. So I'm keeping my eye on that. The Katina man printing on that bad boy is he is short the cues, baby. Um, and here we go. Dollar Club in the money remix. That's out of boy, Ben. The Katina man is also short meta at 3. 396 to 92? 32. Hit it. Benjamin's dancing today, man. Is that, sorry, that's George Washington. That's not bad. Yeah, I know Benjamin has the George longer Washington. hair. Yeah, hey, I'm not American. Leave me alone. I just know Benjamin because <laughs> his hair. Yeah, I know. That's George Washington, obviously. Guys, uh, Apple absolutely just tanked there. The futures are coming down. Everything is on the way down. Google's on the way down. Softy, Meta. Um, NVIDIA, not really, neither with Tesla, not really. It is more of a, um, right now, Google, Apple, Softy, and Meta. All tanking off the top. A bit of a move down for Amazon, not much. A bit of a move down for NVIDIA, not much. I have no idea what is happening at the moment, but we haven't done our daily, um, what's it, what do we call this? We call this uh, housekeeping. Yes, today I'm looking for the words, which means I didn't sleep that well. Which, which I didn't. Uh, when I start looking for words like that, it means I haven't slept that well. All right, guys, let's find out what we got on tap here. Anything important coming up today? Not really. A lot of commodity stuff, soybean, nat gas, silver, copper, aluminum, oil, gold, all the commodity stuff coming at 
3.30, it looks like. At 1 o'clock, we have the U.S. Baker Hughes oil rig count, et cetera. So a lot of oil stuff, two oil things at 1 o'clock. 11.30 was the Atlanta Fed GDP now, which we don't cover, but investing.com gives two bulls at a three. Uh, obviously, we had PCE today. We know that that came in lower than uh, expectations on that. So nothing really with respect to housekeeping uh, for us um, in the afternoon. Let's go ahead and have a look here at our PayPal trade because this is the only trade we're involved in. We're going to start looking for others. There's a lot of stuff moving today, guys. Uh, we, ha we have Save. We have, uh, we have uh, what's it called, Intel down 11%. So a lot of volatility in some of the chip names. We'll be talking about that. But right now, uh, we've been wetting our beak here on this move up on PayPal. It comes in close to my entry. However, however it is holding that 10-period moving average that it's been straddling. It's been you know, holding it quite well the majority of the morning. I was worried about this one candle over here, a bit of a reversal candle showing up. If this comes in into my, the area that I said, the break of 61.40, that's going to be the end of my trade. It's got to hold this consolidation bottom. What's up, Katina man? The Qs are tanking, the Katina man is saying. So he's absolutely printing over there on his Q short. And here is what he's talking about. This is the MNQ, but it's uh, awfully similar to the, the Qs. We're still above VWAP, but we are red on the day. We're below pivot point. Um, like I said, we're below yesterday's closing print. So looking awfully, I don't want to say awfully bearish, but we are looking bearish on the day. Down about a third of a percent Adara right now on uh, the uh, NQ. The ES is flat. The Dow is up a quarter point. And the Russell is up 0.17. So a bit of a mixed bag today on some of these indexes. Big Adam Deleuze. What's up, Adam? Algo's done for the day for the upside. It does look like that, but we'll see. I'll have to get stopped out of my PayPal position in order to uh, exit this trade. I'm not going to exit it early on. Adam, how do you feel about uh, our friend Jurgen uh, calling it quits with Liverpool? Now we're going to have to, well, not were. But uh, Liverpool's going to have to look for a different coach. I thought that was super interesting. Woke up to that little tidbit this morning. Um, I, was, I was a little shocked. Sent that to my old man who's as shocked as I was. There goes CRBP. This one is absolutely popping off again. Off that $27 consolidation area flying into $29.50. CRBP, the gift that keeps on giving, it did break through this um, previous crest over here, but not on a closing basis. If this one starts curling above 30, this might be interesting here. It is already kind of putting, put it, pulling, I can't even talk, pulling in a bit of a curl pattern here. Let me show you a little bit clearer on the five minute look. There we go, starting to bottom out here and start making higher highs and higher lows. CRBP, awfully volatile today, but it is not done for the day quite yet, at least. Maybe it tanks off this level, but it looks like it's on its way to 30 a day. Yeah, I mean, it's been, the market has been um, doing things, as I, I will mm -hmm. say here. Just what a move. I have to summarize, I think, I'm paraphrasing here, something that Huang family said in the chat. Um, Tesla's up on the day, and some of these uh, chip names are tanking. Like, what a day, right? I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but I definitely agree with the sentiment. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, because Tesla up almost 1%, and some of these tech names struggling a little bit. Tesla, I will call it Compressla a little bit right now, because look at this. Bottom trend line. Top trend line. We're coming into the middle. We're slightly positive in the day, and as we discussed in chart pattern week, and, and Sharif pointed out that I, I found was interesting, is usually uh, with compression patterns, because they are... Uh, pretty much neutral, you, they will generally resolve in whatever direction the stock is tra trading, right? I think that, I believe that. Absolutely so accurate. because we are up on the day, I would say this could resolve to the upside. So I'm gonna be watching here. Do we make a, a do we make a lower low? Do we uh, go below that 138.8? If we don't, I could get involved in this for a long and even just take a little bit of that move back to the upside, uh, 50 pennies there. Also, I have to talk about, I'm, I'm pleased as punch. I was gonna say I'm pretty happy, but no, I'm pleased as punch with this, um, AM, uh, Amex trade here, oh. AXP, I did actually reload a little bit here. This is, you know, I said I don't want to force a reload, but if one comes to fruition, I will take it. I was watching. I liked what we were doing at that 201.75, held it like a glove, put my um, toe, tried to dip my toe in there, and it worked, but also the stock fell below. But we still held that 201.50. So at first I panicked because I was like, we're flushing, we're flushing. But that was when the whole market flushed. I was like, Adara, we held the area of support you liked. Don't get out just yet. Breathe. 
And so I breathed, I stayed in the position, took another beak wetter, just con like I said, continuously dipping my beak as we get up to that range of that 202, um, 60 area, but I don't have that many shares, so it looks like we're gonna have to um, keep the beat dry for the time being, for mm. lack of a better term, <laughs> unless I can get another reload here. But I like I like my average here. I like that to a 187, I have to say, at the bottom of this range. So we're gonna stay patient. I wanna get some of this movement up. If I Even if I get just shy of 204, because that was where we got a little chop and turny around that 204, I'm gonna be really happy. I think this is, you know, for me, it taught me a lot about just staying patient. Um, I, I still think that first entry was a bit impatient, as I said, but, you know, just waiting for that dollar cost average, trying to not force it, um, and just, you know, just to, to quote Cindy Lauper because she was mentioned a little bit earlier today, <laughs> don't be discouraged. Uh, let your true colors shine through, and right now, hopefully, the true colors for AXP looking green. Um, uh, and young Sheldon, his his twin sister fraternal, has a, a poster of Sydney Lauper up in her room because it takes place in the early 90s, yeah. right? So Sydney was still big around that. And she's like doing like, uh, like a pose like this. So he's like, she took it down because she didn't want like uh, posters anymore in her room. She wanted to be more grown up. He's like, no, 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 you can't take that down. She's like, I thought you hated it. He's like, yeah. But I'm used to waking up every morning and asking Aww. myself why she's like in this pose. I love young children. I like that. Yeah. Because he doesn't like change. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he there hates we go. change. Yeah. I like that. But yeah, so I mean, hopefully we don't see any change in this AXP position <laughs> unless I can get, because I was like bringing it back, right? If we can nick another reload. But yeah, I still need to watch young Sheldon. Like the more you tell me, the more I'm very curious. But yeah, um, I, I'm happy with this. Um, I, we're I like stuff. I said, I think it's hilarious that we're both in these payment names. Oh, yeah. Because you're in PayPal. I'm in AXP. I got to tell you, I wasn't really in PayPal for any specific catalyst, just the big tank uh, that it had yesterday. And then it was really putting in a pattern that I liked, which was holding that $60 level. Obviously, the best trade off this would have been earlier at 60 bucks, because that is the low. Technically, on the day, it's 60.01, but look at the wick dance that it did with 60 every single time. It came into that 60-ish area after the bell. It was bought up and was bought up aggressively. So I do like this pattern. In addition to that, for current, for my current purposes, I like how it's holding that 10 EMA. I'm not getting a closing print south of that 10 EMA at the moment. The, I, I'm not saying that if I do get a closing print south of the 10 EMA, I'm gonna cut this straight. I'm gonna continue to follow my plan, which is a 6140 break. If it breaks out below that, I've already got my stop in place. The reason I've chosen that level is it's the low end of this consolidation that we're doing subsequent to our move up. So uh, I'm looking for a possible gap fill. I'm starting to think that this is less likely, uh, but who knows? Uh, I'm, I'm looking for a possible gap fill into 62, 75, 62 and three quarters. That is the low from yesterday, especially uh, the IB low there that we uh, we did right at the open once this bad boy started tanking at 930. If it makes its way great, up there, great. If not, no problem. I'll also be looking to remove quite a bit of the position in front of that whole dollar level, 62, because we know that that could act as a psychological level of uh, resistance level there. I'm talking about the 62 level. If it does clear 62, then I'll really be looking here for that 62.75. We'll have to wait and see what that bad boy does. But CRBP is curling, guys. Yes, it did get a wick through 30, but look at this consistently higher low, higher low, higher low pattern that it's putting in. It looks like it may be curling in here. My only concern with CRBP is that it fakes you out on that curl up and then you end up getting a lower high. So we know the high of the day is 33 and two thirds. Say we top out at 31, we tank back down and break 25, which is the low end of this curl over here. That's my concern. My concern is that it puts in that, high, that lower high and then we start making our way possibly into VWAP, which right now is 22 bucks. But that could just be my own paranoia right, because I don't want to involve myself in such a volatile name. It is doing the dance with no pants right now at 30 bucks. Let's see what it does. Looks awfully strong on the day. Neil, what do you think about this one, CRBP? Any thoughts? The, the Neil loves uh, these small cap gappers as well, so I'd like to get his opinion on it. Yeah, yeah, he's, his mouth is full. We'll give him a second. He's, he's scarfing down his lunch, baby, because it is lunchtime. Well, 10 minutes to lunch. Um, All right. Wong oh family God. says CRBP, ha, ha looks like crap. Well, I mean, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, Huang family, right? Because uh, a small cap gapper trader would love this stock, but you know, a person who doesn't like these low float, no name brand kind of stocks, uh, yeah, like yourself, may, may think this is absolute crap and 
I respect your opinion, but again, I think beauty is in the eye of the beholder here. There you go, yeah. I think that's our, yeah, sorry, yeah, really, really clear board. I didn't even realize it was 11.50. These markets um, have just oh, kept yeah. us so entertained. Um, Levi, I like this um, kind of the opposite of a smiley, a, a, fr a roundy face. Uh, we're seeing a bit of a frowny face here. Uh, we had a bit of recovery that 15, uh, 20, and then we kind of petered out a little bit. I would be, I, I'm trying to get in here. We'll see if I get filled. I'm trying to get in the 115.60, because like I said, I have a habit of setting my uh, unrealistic points of entry, I guess. So I think this is a realistic point of entry. We we're a couple cents away. I'm getting out if we see a decisive break above that 15.7, because that was a very decided curled top that I do not want to mess with. Also, because we were so strong earlier today. Also, speaking of candle patterns, is this is one of that uh, that kind of uh, the evening star we were talking about. An evening star shone on Levi and blazoned onto his jeans here, <laughs> and then we fell to the downside with a viciousness, with yes, a swiftness, what have you here from there. Also, another trade I'm looking at. I might get back Nvidia. I like Nvidia at this uh, VWAP bounce area, and this is a clean VWAP bounce. We also do have these, um, this is sort of, I guess, I don't want to say a morning star because we, we don't, you know, we, Adira, we don't want to diagnose patterns. I, pattern. I have please, to interrupt. Please. I'm sorry. Amazon 160, guys. This is an important level on Amazon. I don't think we've been up here in a while. There is big, big size at that 160 level. Let's see if this one can blow through that whole dollar level. There is a plethora of size sitting at 160. It's up one and a third percent today. The high of the day right now, 159.99. It has not printed above 160. Let's bring in the side chart real quick and figure out where the resistance level uh, is. Let's, um, let's remove that. Let's go to the daily. So are we at all? No, this can't be all time highs on, on Amazon. I'm not going to believe that. Even subsequent to the split. Let me remove pivots here. No, we're not at all time highs. What am I saying? Okay. So the, uh, the move here, where are we looking? All right. So this 160 level, where do we? So we have to get, get through 160. So we just touched 160. The next obvious level is that 170 level. I don't think we see it on the day. Probably, if anything, we're going to see maybe 165 by Monday. That takes us all the way back into February, 20, uh, February 7th, 2022. To go into 170, that takes us back into late March of 2022. But important level here on AMZN. If you're interested in this trade, I just want to alert you that it is at that level and hasn't been up here in quite some time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. for kind of. Yeah, definitely something worth watching. Amazon uh, flying, and the double bottom too is definitely interesting. Also, um, shout out to Sean here. Sorry, I just saw this now. Um, I'd like to show this QQQ short Bam. that Sean had hit the short on the Nasdaq with the Q, all traded live, and we still have twenty percent as it continues to fall here. Thank you so much to Sean for sharing all his tweets, and you can follow him at Trader TV Sean on Twitter. Um, Post, repost some fun tweets as well. Always trying to on the lookout for some fun tweets there. So absolutely keep an eye out. Shout out to Sean. Give that a follow. Uh, like I said, basically just repeating what I said earlier. I like this Nvidia VWAP bounce. I like these uh, these wicks uh, past VWAP and then we reclaim VWAP on the actual candle close. You know what that shows? That shows we like VWAP at this level. I'm going to try to get involved here at this 212. 70 ish area because I always like to get involved. A scotch below teeny tiny size here. Um, very, very small position if we get it. Um, and AXP still, no, nothing expressed here about the movement on AXP. Slow and steady wins the race, hopefully. We'll see what we do here. Um, if we get back, like I said, slightly below that 202, uh, 70 area, sorry, that is my reload area. Uh, oh, we did get filled in NVIDIA. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Looks like we're holding that area pretty nicely. I have that on my side chart. And then uh, with NVIDIA, just going to take some profits up along that um, that 213.25 area. So this will be like pretty small, like 50 pennies. But I don't mind. You know what I mean? Just practicing getting in the habit of you see a position, you like the position, get into position. Do not waffle. Waffle is for egos. It is not for trading. <laughs> that worked better in my head. But the point remains. I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Speaking of chips, Jameson um, at looking at AMD. Um, oh, AM dip here. Let's look. Another evening star. These evening stars in the wild. AM dip? Yes. <laughs> I mean, we have it. 
I think AM Dump might be more accurate. I like it. Way. I like it. Very I know, creative. Thank you. I appreciate that. AM Dump I've heard before, but yeah, we'll see the AM Dips. Oh, well, Andrew Chow, heard thank AM you. Dump. Appreciate that there. But AMD, like NVIDIA, uh, should be interesting around VWAP. Uh, NVIDIA having that clean bounce off VWAP. AMD approaching, encroaching VWAP. And also look here. It'll be, end up coinciding with the area. We had a little bit of a dip and then a move up earlier today, 1020. Uh, so that was about uh, this one 78 area. Also, whole dollar areas can be interesting too in confluence with this VWAP. Shout out to Opie who also, we were talking about these whole dollar level breaks and how significant they can be way back when NVIDIA was around 535. Mm. Can't believe that was only two weeks ago. But yeah, all these chip names still on watch. Let's look at, let's see what the Intel is on Intel. Um, Intel dancing around VWAP. These chips and VWAP certainly are of interest today. Mostly just focusing here on my AXP trade and NVIDIA inching up past that VWAP, gonna, like I said, I might, I'm practicing reloading, so if we do get that 6.12.50 and we hold 6.12.50, I might dip my toe back in, or not dip my toe back in, my toe's in. I might dip another toe in, I guess. Sure. Um, but yeah, I would like to see what we do with that 6.13, gonna be very cognizant of that 6.13.25 area, because look, uh, resistance, support. I'm gonna keep an eye on this because I, I don't trust these resistance and support levels. And NVIDIA is fast and it is furious. I do not want to mess with the, the power in this name at all. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, guys, I'm, I'm keeping my eyes here on Amazon. I haven't jumped into this trade yet. Look, I've put an order for long on the other side of 160. I did give it about five pennies worth of spread. That means I, I put my trigger price at a certain price and then my limit price, five pennies above that. The reason is because you can typically have areas of illiquidity once that key level is broken. So, so much demand is there at that particular level that all those intervening levels between say 160 and 160.10 could become illiquid because they just get eaten up by one big order or multiple orders that are ahead in priority. Um, uh, than, you, than your order, essentially. So, you know, a lot of people possibly looking short here. I did consider that. I thought about maybe taking a short. I was a little hesitant to take it short because we are above 17.6, so I didn't want to guess the direction of the market when we hadn't given up the ghost on the NQ. I know that it's marching to the beat of its own drum a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. So I'm going to wait and see what happens here on AMZN. But I got to tell you, when I first sat down today, uh, I came in about 7.10, 7.15 this morning, and Amazon looked awfully bullish compared to the other Mag7 names. So it was a little bit of an indicator in the pre-market that this might be the case. Looks like whoever turned on the buying program turned it on early, uh, and it's continued to be on uh, subsequent to the bell. So right now, we're, we're moving up into 160 again. If I had to guess, and I'm not, not trying to, you know, pontificate or whatever there it goes and it blows through my order so I got I got the fill on the dip back down there goes Amazon through 160 could we hold this level we have to wet our beak here on some profits where we got filled at fives um, okay so let's sit at uh, 20s because what is life without whimsy uh, let's see if we can continue to make our way up there the tape is moving a little bit aggressively here as we gum we so we blow through that level but can we hold 160? Or is it going to be that big move down in a bamboozling trade? We're going to have to find out. Pack, I don't want to say pack your patience on this one, but make sure that you are um, managing risk. All right. Now, your, the, your risk management system is going to be a little bit different depending on your size and your style, the, your trading size and your style. But make sure you are managing risk here because it is a key level and it can get blown through. The market is not that strong. We're still negative on the NQ Adair. Yeah, it's a really good look, though. Congrats on that trade and that nice pop to the upside there with the beak wetter at the ready. Also, I would say, because you were saying you don't want to say pack your patients. Maybe it's like part of in your patient suitcase, you've got your, your risk management. And right, because it was like, you know, you, be cognizant of risk, I guess. Right. And so I think maybe part of being patient is, you know, what what kind of risk are you having? Are you? Make sure to keep your head on. Don't get out too early. I think maybe all of that could be in your patient suitcase there. So I just wanted to, to, to use the word you just used, pontificate on that. But I think that's a really good trade. And felicitation on that. Oh.
I mean, Sharif said it first, so I will give oh. him the credit for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just have to concentrate on this. No, trade, of course, so, yeah. definitely concentrate. Keep going. I will continue talking about um, AXP uh, because we're we're still we're holding this range really well. I I hope that this hold is not going to be full to the downside. And as I say that, we get a nice little push up. So we will see what happens here. And then uh, Nvidia also did get out of that position. Like I said, I was going to be very cognizant of that three uh, or three three Nvidia three six thirteen. There we go six. 13, um, 25 ish area in NVIDIA. We, we got that. I got a 50 paper penny, 55 paper penny winner there on NVIDIA. I did get out there because, like I said, I didn't want to hold this position too long. I really just kind of wanted to do that dance. Uh, now we're touching, uh, we're testing 614 again. I'm definitely willing to get back in and out of this name as we go. I did that a little bit earlier. Had, um, like I said, one and a half successful trades uh, on this. Now, now I guess we've had two and a half successful trades because one of them, I got out part of the position, a scope's too late, and then it fell to the downside. Neil's bullying Sharif again in the chat. Adara gets the credit, not Sharif. For That's pontificate, um, but I will give it to um, Sharif. But also thank you there for the support, Neil. And I guess we will get the real deal pretty soon here as well. So keep your ears and eyes peeled. I, ears peeled. He'll be physically present as well. Keep your ears and eyes peeled for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, so much trading happening today. I feel like I've, you know, we're, we're both trying to get involved in some positions here. Um, some of these payment names and then Sharif swinging from the vines and Amazon as well uh -huh. to the upside. So I think it's been a great, it's been a great, um, I was going to say morning, but I guess it is still the morning. It's been a great first few uh, hours here on the midday, or I guess first hour, hour what am I yeah, saying? Yeah, but yeah, no, I, I just pulled up PayPal because I, you know, we had, I had some hard feelings about this one yesterday, but it's holding this area really well. I, Really good look still on this one. Um, but yeah, payment payment names definitely on watch today with those earnings. Visa and um, Visa and AXP and then also PayPal shocking the world yesterday. But for now, Dakota CEO. The world, but let's go now for the real deal with our pal Neil. Real deal once again, and uh, you know what? Groundhog Day isn't actually real. It's a fantastic movie. It doesn't mean, however, that you can't look to rinse and repeat every single day as a trader. What is the most simple and basic trading strategy that you can look for? For one day to repeat itself. If you get the same thing two days in a row, I mean, it speaks to uh, an opportunity for you to take advantage of it. And I'm going to give you three ideas here, three different ideas on how this can play out for you. Sometimes it seems obvious. But uh, the simple trades are often the best. The boring trades are often the best. And that's what you want to look for as a trader. What is repeatable, especially if you're a beginning trader? So the first up, I got SoFi here. Uh, so look at, I'm giving you four days, and I'm not including today. But I am showing the four last four days. Oh, look what this did two days in a row. Same top, 8.30, same bottom, 7.75. OK, well, that's curious. When it fails that bottom, 8.30, look at that top now. Sorry, when it fails that bottom, 7.75, look at that top in the, af in the early, uh, late, af late morning into the afternoon. You go 7.75, now down into 7.50. So now you have double bottom, double top, and then lower high, same top, 7.75, 7.50. Now, if you were going to trade the next day, the first thing I'm going to think about is, OK, well, would it actually just hold the same support level? Is, is 750 going to hold? Or is 775 going to be the level I'm trading off of? It's that simple. It's like really, it's not rocket science. In this particular case, well, it didn't matter a heck of a lot which one you chose. Because at the open, it immediately fails the top. That's one wick right at 930 and right back underneath the previous resistance level. Goes right down into 750, and there is your bottom. Now, if you're going to make some kind of a, a style trade here where you're looking for a bottom top, uh, maybe you'd hold this to the high. I think it's generally downtrend, downward trending because the last time it did it, whoops, I'll zoom back out here. The last time it made that move, it double topped, went all the way back in and was trending in. So it's trending to the downside, which is why I'm not going to hold it to the high of the day there. I think I'm going lower high because the trend is overall down but that's three days in a row it holds the same bottom. You could trade this, like I said, in either direction. You could have shorted the double top. You could have shorted that 775 failed breakout at the high of the day. It doesn't really matter. All you know is you've got a stock which is showing you a pattern and you want to take advantage of it. And the other thing that's great about this is they have earnings on Monday. 
So you might have people that are waiting around and not putting big positions on and not going crazy until the numbers are dropped. So you have like this compressing uh, level of volatility, which is giving you an opportunity as well. I said I'd give you three, right? So one, two, three, got to get to two, first of all. And, and I'm going to say, that, look, if anyone's watching the payment processors has already known this if you watched uh, the morning show uh, today. Yesterday on Square, and I'm going to give you a 15-minute chart first because this level is even better than just what you're seeing on the three-minute chart. When you pop out the 15-minute chart on Square, look at the wick bottom right back there a week ago, make another high, and then right back into this wick bottom. Yeah, does that look any good? That looks pretty good. You get another bottom there yesterday, so that's three times you bounced off 62, and then a fourth time today. Okay, so you got to ask yourself a question. Could you possibly like the support at 62 anymore? You'd think the answer is no, but the answer is an absurd yes. Because the second part of looking for this pattern is, what if you can add even more confluence to a big level hitting the next day? Well, in this case, you could. And you almost should have. Why? Because PayPal, an adjacent stock, had um, an event yesterday and tanked. Now, this is right at midday. When it, when it absolutely flushed through those lows. PayPal was strong. PayPal got destroyed for $4 to the downside afternoon. The event started at 12.30. That is a tremendous amount of down pressure. Can you get information from downward pressure? I'd like to think that you can. Because Square held 62, 12.30 hits, Square holds 62 again. So if you didn't already like level just because it was a line on a chart, now you've got a massive event causing pressure in that space, showing you that there's still buyers in this other name at that specific price. So then you look for, if you have a chance to get it off the long, it ends up working out off that 62 level. So the second part of it is, if you see a pattern forming and you get confluence for it, like the example with PayPal, it's much better than the SoFi trade because SoFi wasn't in play in particular. And that's why you get more out of the square move because there was more significance to that 62 level. I can't stress this enough. You've got to be able to learn the lessons from the day before because before I move on to the next idea, I have to remind anybody that wasn't watching this live. On day two at 62, I was long this yesterday on square. You know, I had this trade and I made the wick bottom. Like I was long twice in this bottom and got stopped out twice. So it's not just about finding the key level, it's adjusting your execution strategy. So the, the way that I went into this of trying to avoid that was understanding if the first part of the move is around 62 to 63, and I think that that can be a general move where you can then hold some past a dollar, and a scalp trade is 50 cents. Well, what I needed to be able to do is not have a hard stop at 62 even. So in that particular case, I'm going to give it a little bit more room, long right in front of 62, but I'm not stopping it out at 99 or 95. In that particular case, because the more I like the level, I'm giving it to 70 or 75, maybe even a little bit more. But how can you have the confidence to do that when it's also a flat bottom break? All of that comes from what happened in PayPal the day before. Liquidity vacuums and massive events sometimes reveal and tip the hands of big buyers. Think of a Fed day. How many times have you seen the Fed make a decision on interest rates, the market spikes up and down, stocks show you a big level, then the next day that level holds? That's what's important. Because when algos stop making a bid and an ask, you got to look to where they're comfortable buying or selling again. And in this case, that's where the 62 came in. So confidence to get it, but then confidence to also give it a little bit more room, add on the way back in, and then try to hold on to a piece. All right. I said I'd promise you three. The next one and the last one is, what do you do about, let's just say, earnings? Now, we all know earnings are a volatile trade. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I had this trade on Intel, but I look back and it's like, why didn't I have this trade? We talked about it in the morning show. Didn't put it on. When you look for history repeating itself, sometimes it's not going to be in the open market. Now, I just finished talking about liquidity events, right? So when PayPal had their live event, market hours were open, you saw it tank, other stocks caught bids like Square did at 62. Well, in the aftermarket, when there's earnings, there's volatility. And you see here with Intel, 
Intel went from 50 bucks to 43 in the aftermarket. They beat, on, they beat on the top and the bottom line, but they, you know, their guidance wasn't up to par, and they got absolutely destroyed. You can see that here. The bid came in at 43. Okay, so that's important. The bid came in at 43, and it bounced back. Great. It still gapped to the downside the next day. So what do you do about that 43? Well, the first thing you should always do is, when in doubt, zoom out. Is there anything that will make me like 43 a little bit more? And this is, this is, this is where it gets tricky. Because you've already determined you've made a wick bottom at 43. You've got to avoid confirmation bias here and try to make sure it's something consistent. In this particular case, I've been observing this channel for the entire year on Intel. Higher highs, higher lows that it recently broke out. Now, it broke out of the channel, so it's kind of come and gone. But look what happened when it retested the top of that channel. I want to see how it behaves. It bounced off the top of that channel and went to a fresh high. So once I see that, I'm like, oh, I'm leaving that line in there, leaving my trend line in. What happens if it bounces off again? I wasn't thinking about earnings. I was just thinking about how good that trend line was. So once I had that in and I see it bounce off 43, which is the same trend line, there it is again in the aftermarket. Well, where do you think you bounced at the open? Like I said, I didn't have this trade on. I was trying to fade Intel on a pop instead of go long off that 43 level. But look what ends up working. It's pretty clean. You've got to be able to look to the history. It's not just about finding, it's, all, it's great finding um, indicators that you love. Those should be in your toolbox. But I think the most simplistic thing you can do before you start your trading day is look at what happened yesterday on the stock or maybe the, next, the two days before and what can I do with that? What can I learn from that? What can I glean from that? So first, you've got a simple repeating pattern like SoFi, where it literally mirrored two days in a row, then mirrored them again, then gave you a trade in the fifth day. That's easy. Two, two, then you get another one. Um, Square, which not only gave you the same bottom, significant bottom two days in a row, it then gave you confluence in the way that that bottom held because of news on PayPal. And then in the third instance, you've got something on earnings here, which you get a massive supply zone showing up in the aftermarket on a stock that tanked, lining up with a major trend line on the daily, which gives you the reason to go long when it dips in at the open. So there's three ideas, and all you got to do is look at what happened the day before. You saw how it worked out for Bill Murray. The guy basically became like a god in Groundhog Day. That's not going to happen to you in trading, but it's not a bad way to start your day. What happened yesterday, and how can I use it for my trades today? That's the real deal. Very much, Neil. Insightful and informative, as always. Do appreciate you there. Uh, and Intel, very, very interesting look here. And uh, we'll have to wait and see what they do because, well, it's a company that is changing the remotus operandi, so there could be a lot of potential upside for that, especially with the geopolitical issues surrounding uh, microprocessor uh, and semi semiconductor production. Um, while Neil was dropping hot lines, Amazon decided to drop or pop its, uh, its own price action. Let's have a look at the chart over here because we got long at that 160 break and this one skyrocketed. It, well, no, it did. Uh, it went up to 160.72. That's the high of the day. We have top wick for now, but it is on its way down. And I said to Adara, I'm like, look, Adara, this is what we call a topping tail candle here despite the fact that it finished green. However, Never want to put too much stock into one candle. So especially, you know, if we don't really get that aggressive big boy Hwadun down into 160. So while this one could look like an inverted hammer candle, this one actually looks like it's forming a hammer candle where the price action got moved down, then maybe actually closed, closes towards the top. In which case, you'll have two very opposite candles forming back to back uh, with one another. We're going to have to wait and see how this resolves. I'm not getting out here. My entry is 160.05. I'm going to give it to exactly 160. I'll take that five penny hit. But I want to see if it dips down, does it hold previous level of resistance being that 160 level acting now possibly as that support? We'll have to wait and see. Pack your patience if you're long at 160 with me here. 
It was a big boy break through that 160 level. Initially, we didn't get filled because of the area of illiquidity, and that's why I specifically said to you guys, there has to be either a market order out there, which I don't recommend. What I recommend you do is put in a limit order with a wider spread. Mine was five pennies, and it didn't even get filled. On the way up, it took the price action to come back down for me to get the full fill. So this is exactly what I was telling you guys about that. I mean, it's not just about reading charts or reading price patterns, but you actually have to have the right orders in so you can get involved in the trade. And so here we are right now on AMZN. We're gonna pack our patience on this one. We're gonna see if this one can run up into some other resistance levels. We talked about 165, I really have, um, I really don't think that this one runs into 165. I don't see Amazon running. It was 157.91, say 158 low. I don't see this running $7 today into that 165 level. We'll have to see how it does the other trade that we have on. There goes PayPal through 62 bucks. We get the beak wetter there. This one, I think this can actually get to 62.75. It, if it can get above 62 on a closing basis, we're at 62 right now. There isn't too much size. There goes 62 Adair. We're gonna wet our beak here for some profits as this one pops up over 2% right now on PYPL. The reason I'm in this one is that there was a big boy Hwadunk yesterday. And then what I'm looking for is that gap fill. You know, there's a saying in trading, all gap gets all gaps get filled, that's not entirely true, but there's a reason that saying went around, it's because sometimes they do get filled and maybe today will be one of those days. We're nicely above 62 now, let's get it on a closing basis on the five minute chart for me to, for me to really get going here on this one. But the other trade we have to keep our eye on is Amazon It is coming back into that 160 level. Decisions have to be made. I've taken out the half the position uh, already. I'm hold, hold on, how much do I have? Yeah, I have exactly half the position right now. And if it comes into 160, you know we're gonna we're gonna give back a lot of money by not taking it uh, at the top there. And there goes Amazon right down now into the 160 teens. Could this be giving up the ghost? That topping tail candle on the five minute looks awfully, awfully ugly. Yeah, that's a, that's a scary candle. And I like that you have the beak water set on that candle. Like that's a great look. And I think definitely you were prepared for that bamboozlement to borrow a word that is used a lot hey. here, not often by me. Um, I am in a, in a trade and I have stories, but for now I would like to get to our super chat. Thank you very much to David Clark for the $5 super chat. First super chat on the live stream. So thank you very much for that. S box and Nike. China trade and China stimmy. Jim Kramer says the China exposure trade is live. Um, Jim, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take a look. Let's look at S Bucks and Nike. Um, I know Sean traded Starbucks, I want to say yesterday, um, I believe. Yeah, well, I think it was yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Yeah. But yes, let's see if there's any um, anything we can sip on today. Ooh, okay. Ooh, get excited there. This is 92.40 bounce. Pre-market bounce, um, sort of touch earlier, bounce. And then once more again at 10 with a vengeance, uh, kind of climbing here to the upside. A uh, little bit more stagnant. It, it lost a little bit of steam. Curled up again uh, in the around that 93 area, 10.55 to 11.55. So about that first hour of the midday. But we're gonna have to see if it has any gas left in the tank for Starbucks, or I guess any, any coffee left here. <laughs> Um, I said gas left, and I'm like, this is not a Tesla. <laughs> Tesla also doesn't have gas left in the tank, but oh, yeah. you know. Well, there's no gas. That's true. Um, Nike, oh, Nike's interesting. Nike, I don't want to say top and tail. Thank you. Thank you, Ramin. Um, I don't want to say top and tail Ramin. candle, but certainly some exhaustion here uh, with two of these candles, almost the same area. Now we're seeing a nice swoop below Ooh. that nine day EMA. Uh, we're going to have to see what we do here. But yeah, also interesting with Jim Crater, Kramer, I would like to point out um, there was, he officially kicked Tesla. It's been evicted from the Mag 7 yesterday. Um, um, and it actually, at one point yesterday, Tesla did eclipse, uh, or Eli Lilly eclipsed Tesla in terms of market cap. Yeah. And um, that's interesting, too, because Jim Cramer a couple of days earlier was saying Eli Lilly is in his new Meg 7. So a good day for, for yep. Lilly, I guess. Let's yeah. actually, let's look. Let's see if there's a million Lilly. I like um, Lilly. Don't get me wrong. Me I just don't want to jump on that boat so no, me quickly either. when we really haven't proven the effect. They're effective. These drugs are yeah. like GL, what are they called? G GL1? GLPs, yeah. GLPs, thank you. Um, but you know, they could, there could be some detriment, Adara. We don't know, right? Like, well, no, I agree. I mean, I like trading this stock, but uh, yeah. just because there's been a lot of momentum, sure, and I like, different. I like yeah. these stocks that move a little bit more slowly too, right? So I totally get what you mean, though. Uh, Eli Lilly is interesting, but it's below a milli, and though I did do that, it ended up working out all right on Tuesday, just because I, I was. Uh, 
you know, I was erroneous in my entry in that trade. I really should have been checking the volume more uh, caref carefully. I don't want to do that again, but I do like the look of this. We're, we're sort of seeing potentially, if, I don't want to say a flat top break, but this 638, certainly interesting with these higher lows. So I'm going to keep my eye on that. Zion Lala. Zion. Saying, um, Amazon earnings, February 2nd. Any yes, thoughts? Sir. Is Obi trading Amazon today? Um, I do not know if Obi's trading Amazon today. I know Sharif killed it on Amazon there, um, and Obi is not there. Um, but we will have to, to see um, Amazon earnings next week. Yeah, I think, honestly, too, my, I, I, don't, I, I should probably be more well-versed in what Amazon will do at earnings. But what I will say is a lot of these, these names, I guess Amazon's less tech than a lot, you know, like Apple, a lot of these chip names, but a lot of lower projections. So I think projections seem to be really moving um, the market more so necessarily than the actual numbers. Like even Levi was making crazy highs earlier today. Talking Not, about guidance? Yeah, about oh, guidance. Sorry, that's, I yeah, should have yeah, worded it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, projections is a synonym uh, for guidance. But, you're, yeah, but yeah. guidance is like the easier. Yeah, so yeah. Thank, you, thank you for saying that. But yeah, I mean, Le Eli now Levi kind of fell and it also had um, this kind of topping tail candle a little bit here. Yeah. But that also was up because the earnings weren't very good and the guidance was eh. But they did, what, what they did do that, that the market liked is they said we're going to cut 10 to 15% corporate. So I think, you know what I mean? A lot of that guidance, and a lot of the path forward seems to be mattering. So I think what Amazon has to say there will be of interest. It's crazy that this started. I was seeing something recently too. Uh, where it was talking about Jeff Bezos saying originally they thought they would lose to Barnes & Noble when they were a bookseller, right? Oh, so yeah. Amazon has had oh, yeah. a crazy trajectory. We'll see if that continues. I also want to briefly um, talk about this AXP trade. I was in the long. Uh, I did accidentally. I reloaded. I didn't accidentally. I intentionally reloaded because we were holding a this level around that uh, 201.70. Then we kind of crashed below it. I got into the short, took out part of the position at VWAP. Looks like we're coiling back in, so I may have to, to cut this one short. Cut the short short. Um, we will see what occurs here um yeah i think right. that i think really interesting look here but the vwap bounce is making me a skosh nervous how how are you doing with your trade yeah they're both really they're good um the amazon trade is coming in that's three red candles in a row on the five minute look but a lot of them are bottoming tail which means that really buyers are stepping in to push the price action back up this is what we talk we're talking about when we look at these bottoming tail candles despite the fact that there's three successive uh red candles in a row i feel like buyers are trying to keep this bad boy up owing to these bottoming tail candles however i can feel however i want the market to tell me i don't give you you know what about how you feel. So the price action has to actually go up. And I, you know, I can see all the bottoming tail candles I want and it will mean nothing unless the price starts coming back up. This is the candle that kind of got me concerned. That's the spinning top candle, essentially where you have a big move up by buyers and sellers say, no you don't. And they push you right back down. So keeping my eye on this one, uh, like I said earlier, I'm giving this to 160 on the dot. If it breaks 160, I'm out. I'm long 160.05, right? So I can give up five pennies. I made already 75 or 72. No, it's not less than that. 63, uh, sorry, 68 pennies on that bad boy. Uh, we'll ha uh, at the top, obviously, not for the entire thing. So we'll have to wait and see what Amazon does here. Does it hold 160? That's going to be an important question going into the rest of the afternoon. Uh, but I'm happy that I took it long because I was debating whether or not to take it short because there was just so much size at that 160 level. But I think what really kind of uh, made the decision for me was the fact that, like I said this morning, when I came in, I felt that Amazon was the strongest of the seven. It had the best looking pre-market price action chart, whatever. Um, and that kind of maybe kind of tipped uh, the scales in favor of the long. I feel like somebody may have a buy program on this one on today. The other trade, PYPL. We're going to start the lesson uh, shortly, guys. I just want to be able to de-risk a little bit more if I can in front of or just above, sorry, 62, uh, because we've been really struggling with the $62 level on PayPal. Sure, we cleared it. Fine. That's great. That's a good first step. I'm talking about that 62 09 touch, but look where we are now. Below 62, 61.95. I was really looking for a decisive 62 hold here, and I'm not getting it, okay? I'm not getting the 62 hold, and the reason that's important for me is it's because it's the first psychological resistance level that we've been talking about, right? And if we can clear that 62 level, I really think it puts us in a good position for that 62 and three quarter move. That would be uh, a touch into yesterday's low right there from essentially 9.30 to about 10 o'clock we were touching 
62.75 from the downside. Right now, coming back down into 61 mid 80s. So we are rejecting $62 on this bad bull, but we've done that before. We're, we're long, where are we long? We're long 58. So we have a bit of room, about 30 pennies here. Uh, let's see what we get. But how's the Amazon trade doing? Right back into 160 decisions here have to be made on AMZN. And I'm telling you, if this prints anything below 160, I am gonna hit the flatten button here. It has to hold 160 for me to stay in this trade. Maybe I'm wrong to do that. Maybe I should give it a couple of pennies. But if I am wrong to do that, then I'll have to suffer the consequences. But I'm not gonna allow this trade to go against me. I feel like I had a good entry on it. And if I have to give up the ghost on, uh, give up, uh, sorry, not give up the ghost, but give up uh, a lot of the move, owing to the fact that I'm still holding some shareage on this bad boy, then so be it. But uh, we'll see here what happens at 160. Sorry, I can't start the lesson while I'm well, I'm looking at this 160 level. Uh, if it breaks, I'll just hit flat. If it doesn't, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens there. While I was yapping about Amazon and PayPal, I wanna let you know that CRBP is absolutely rocketing. It just hit $39.96, essentially a 40 touch. It's halted uh, to the upside again on the, on the way up. I know people were yelling about that in the chat, but we didn't have an opportunity to cover it here because we were on uh, Amazon and then Neil, was doing um, real deal. So we weren't able to cover uh, CRBP as it skyrocketed there off. Where to start off its life today? $7. It, it's, guys, the closing print on CRBP yesterday was $8 and I think two thirds, give or take, right? So the fact that we hit 40 bucks today is, is nuts in and of itself, up over 300% right now. Jeez, man, this Amazon 160 thing. Maybe I should just put a stop right below that 160 level. I'll send it to you so I can change my stop. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just got out of AXP. Um, I should have taken the whole thing out of that VWAP bounce. Alas, I did not. Uh, and I watched, you know, I, I basically I didn't want us to get into that area where we had that the start of that range earlier, that really nice um, support. And then it was kind of resistance as well. So now, you know, I, I, I want to see what we do here. I saw us uh, get to it and hold it. I got out. In retrospect, we actually still might be holding this as resistant so I might get back in on that short uh, we shall see definitely better point of entry than my original point of entry which was like 20102 but we just blew above that so we're going to watch if we fall back into this range I might go long basically the point is I will take no. I will take this American Express in either direction also just to note I am in the meta short uh, first speak wetter incoming um, oh that is not an NY stock uh, but yeah we do have to get to the lesson but yeah just this meta short got in at the 396 i saw this top and tail candle to transition i saw that candle here and i said nah -uh -uh -uh. and we we just kind of fell below made a new lower low below that um uh nine day ema so i will throw it back yes um, um, how is amazon going yet. it's, um, it's, it's give me a sec. yeah amazon hit 160 i flattened once it hit 160 and then i was mad at myself i'm like look you should have given it five more pennies i don't care uh, we're going to leave that there. Let's start the lesson, baby. We're talking about the first one today, the Gravestone Doji. You see this Doji, you end up, uh, you, you end up dead. That's uh, the whole thing here, right? No, kidding, of course, guys. Let's talk a little bit about this one and uh, what we're looking for <laughs> with respect to the characteristics. <laughs> guys are laughing at me. <laughs> you go bye-bye. <laughs> All right, the Gravestone Doji pattern indicates a potential bearish trend reversal. The Gravestone Doji is generally formed at the top or the crest of a price action. Traders interpret this pattern as a sign to take a bearish trade on the underlying stock or instrument or whatever you're trading there. Um, what we're looking for, it, what this one is essentially telling us is that buyers were trying to take the market high, but eventually sellers took control of the market the long upper wick, which characterizes the Gravestone Doji here, uh, shows that buyers have lost the momentum. So you can clearly see what preceded uh, this move up was an aggressive uptrend. And then we, we made a newer high owing to that topping tail part on the Doji, the Gravestone Doji. And then the buyer said, or sorry, the seller said, no, you don't. And then pushed the price action and the closing price all the way down very much near the opening price. That is what is characterized here. So it is a bearish trend reversal. The pros of this uh, candlestick pattern is that it signals a potential bearish reversal and it can also easily be identified on a naked chart owing to its very distinctive uh, look. 
And the cons of this pattern is that it can generate false trading signals and the formation of the Gravestone Doji has become statistically very rare. It doesn't happen all that often. Now, you may see a candle that looks like the Gravestone Doji, but it's not just about seeing a candle that looks like it. It has to be found in the right place. So the Gravestone Doji, what we're looking for is a preceding strong uptrend. That's where we wanna see, because we want, we're, we're, this is a bearish reversal uh, candlestick pattern, right? So we, we take this when things start turning south from going north. So just because you see it somewhere, it doesn't mean that it's a gravestone doji. You have to see it in the right place. Any questions there or comments? Yeah, no, I think it's interesting. I like to, because I, I, it, it looks like a gravestone, right? It's been, mm -hmm. it's been put up at the top of that upward trend. And also, as you said, if you see it, you're... Maybe, maybe the trade's yeah. going to the downside, right? Ooh. But no, I think, I think it's interesting too, because like I said earlier, and I, I stand by it, this one very much about context. It's not just about the candle. And that's the case for a lot of these too, right? But it's about what's the climate surrounding this candle? Uh, like, you know, are we in an uptrend? Are we seeing this at the peak of the uptrend? It's definitely something, a lot of these two, like even if you don't get involved or even if you don't leave a trade because of them, it's just basically something like, hey, take note, this could be a key level. And I think that's also why yeah. if you see these with confluence with any specific indicator, any other wide uh, ongoing pattern, because we know some some things, there are magnets for certain levels. Another shout out to Obi there. But I think, yeah, really just looking at the, the entire picture. And as Sharif always says, the balance of the evidence really key yes, here. Yes, ma'am. All right, next on the docket, the Dragonfly Doji. Essentially the opposite of the Gravestone Doji. Looks exactly the same, but just flipped upside down, okay? And what this is indicating is a bullish trend reversal. By definition, if it's a bullish trend reversal, where do you need to find it? You need to find it at the end of a downtrend. So the price action preceding this candle has to be down and to the right, okay? Again, very important where we find these candles, not just find the shape that we want. Um, again, it's formed at the bottom of a price chart. Traders interpret this pattern as a signal to take a bullish trade on the, on the underlying stock or the instrument if it's not a stock or an equity. The Dragonfly Doji tells us that sellers were pushing the market lower to the lower side, excuse me, but then they eventually lost control to the increasing buying pressure that was coming in. Let me just make sure that I'm good to go on these trades. Okay, so it looks like I have to interrupt here for a second. Do, yeah. Because it looks like, yeah, well, PayPal is coming into that 61 and a half. I put in and out for PayPal on the break of $61.40. I've given it about 10 pennies or so uh, from that 60, 50 level in case it dips down below 50. I'm gonna see what this one does. I'm trying to manage this one while we do the lesson, but PayPal coming down. We got several beak wetters through 62. However, it is now coming down again. So be on the lookout if you are following me long on this one. Be careful. It hasn't put in any significant newer lows, but just be on the lookout, okay? All right, so the, it, the, do, the Dragonfly Doji can be spotted on the bottom of a price chart. You will have to look for a candle having a long wick to its lower side with the price opening and closing near the same level at the top. So the, the bull said, no you don't, you're not, com you're not bringing this price any lower, and they bought the entire thing up by making the closing print very close to the opening print. What's going on, Katina, man? <laughs> he's all about the remix today, baby. He's, he's gonna put the, the link for that trade in the chat. He just shorted the cues again. So if anybody wants to see the Katina Man's trade, click that link I already see in the chat, okay? The pros of this particular pattern, guys, is that it gives trader an early signal of a potential uh, bullish trend reversal, and it can also be identified super easy on a chart owing to its very distinctive look. The cons of this candlestick pattern, though, is sadly it can sometimes uh, generate a false trading signal. So you gotta be on the lookout for what, what price action is subsequent to it. So do we continue to trend up or do we put in a dragonfly doji and then continue down? If, if it continued down, then the buyers weren't strong enough to push the, price and back, push the price back up and the candlestick pattern 
the, the bullish reversal is invalid and you should be getting out of the trade. Any questions or comments, Adara? You know, like I said, I think too, um, what, what you said earlier that's interesting that I kind of want to echo in case anybody just uh, wandered in or moseyed on in over yeah, here. Yeah, you said sure. with two, with, because these are rarer, it really helps you just, don't don't just assume you see one, right? If you've Absolutely. seen it in the wild, you really need to look and make sure, are there any other factors? Or even if you do think you see one, hey, are there any other factors that could be influencing this? So you're not getting in purely on a candlestick pattern, especially Agreed. if it is rare. And also uh, the, the counter side, side of that the flip of that is if you see it because it's rare really really keep an eye on it right yes, so i think the being rare can kind of help your analysis in two ways i would say that would be my take on that i love i love it um yes that that's very accurate all right the next one guys three outside up yeah sounds like it doesn't make any sense but you stare at it and then it starts making a little bit more sense the three outside up candlestick pattern is a bullish reversal pattern. Bullish reversal pattern. That tells you right away where you should be finding this particular candlestick pattern. If it's a bullish reversal pattern, then you automatic you, you know the price action that preceded it has to be bearish, okay? Because we're reversing the bearish uh, price action and we're gonna go bullish. Right away you should know. It is formed, surprise, surprise, at the bottom of a price chart or the trough. The three outside, uh, the three outside up patterns are formed when the first candlestick is bearish, hence the red candle over here, followed by a long bullish candle which covers the bearish candlestick from, from top to bottom. And this is what we called an engulfing candle before, okay? And so what you're looking for here is the bearish candle which is formed at, in the trough or at the bottom of the price action has next to it a bullish engulfing candle. It has to be green and it has to encompass, ensconce the entire uh, price action there of, uh, <laughs> of uh, the, uh, the bearish look there, okay? okay? And then there's a third candle involved here, Dara, and the third candle has to have a closing print above the high of the second green candle. So this is the high of the second green candle. The closing print on this one has to be above that, okay? So the three upside, the three outside up pattern is a strong bullish pattern, which indicates that the bears tried to take the market further down, but they were defeated by the immense buying pressure. This pattern also signals a potential bottoming out of the market which is not unusual because we know we find it in the trough area. The candlestick pattern is spotted again on the bottom. Spotting this pattern is a little bit easier than others. You have to have three candles in a sequence where these are the following rules. There's three rules. The first candle is a bearish candle looking to continue the established downtrend down into the right. The second candle is a strong bullish candle which covers both the highs and the lows of the first candle. And the third, the third candle resumes a new trend by breaking above the second candle's high. I thought you were going to hit something on the stream deck because your hand was out there like that. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, I have to say that. The Katina man is printing on Qs and Roblox. Q short, Roblox, uh, what is it? Down, down. Down. Short Roblox, 41 Short low Roblox, $41.12. The Katina man is printing at that, on that. Short on the high. And he's shorting the high of the day on the futures as we currently speak. So that's uh, his position right now. If you're following along with the Katina man, be made aware there. Okay. Let me just check quickly on my PayPal trade here. Yeah, not bad. Nothing great, but uh, all right. Next one on the docket. Three inside down. Exactly the opposite of the three outside up. In this particular case, we have a bearish reversal pattern. Again, the fact that I'm saying bearish reversal pattern should already give you an indication of where to find this, um, these candles, this candlestick pattern. It has to be at the crest, okay, at the top of the price action. Uh, the three inside, inside down patterns are formed when the first candlestick or the first candle is bullish followed by a long bearish candle that covers the bullish candle from top to bottom, and the third candle has to break and close below the, sec the second uh, red candle's low. So that's, you can see that here. So this candle over here makes a low right there, and then look where the closing print is on this candle all the way down here, okay? So that's the look on that one. 
It shows this pattern shows that the bulls tried to take the market further up, but lost against the immense selling pressure of the bears. This pattern also signals a potential top in the making. Okay, so this sometimes is um, you can find these at tops, you know, where we re reverse whatever percentage off that. Um, the pros of this candlestick pattern is it is a strong reversal pattern and has a high probability rate of success. It's also easier to spot on the chart because it is a three candlestick pattern where the last candle makes and breaks below the, pre the second candle's low. The cons of this are basically that sometimes it requires te other technical tools like MACD or RSI, and sadly it can lead to some false trading signals as well, Adara. Any questions or comments about the three outside up or three inside down? Well, yeah, what I like about this, I will say, is that, like, A, I like that it shows you the stop loss and entry level, but B, I think this one, because uh, the, any all of these uh, tri-candle patterns or these three candlestick patterns, really, they give you a, a moment of confirmation as well, right? Bless you. Like, when you see that other, that candle to the downside, you're like, hey, this actually may be a confirmed yes. level, and so you're not rushing in all willy-nilly, right? Also, a note here, I believe it was Alison Mulcahy in the chat earlier saying these ones are named um, because you have, like, you know, a move to the inside, so you've got the green candle outside, red inside, and then a move down so yes. I'm paraphrasing it she worded it much better but so there you know kind of a, a reason for that I suppose um, but yeah I think a really cool pattern I do like with that too they show you and again you can always choose your own stop loss entry levels I also want to touch on because I forgot to touch on this earlier something you said that I appreciated was you were saying you know uh, maybe you don't want to wait because I know you, you will talk a lot about entry in terms of like uh, getting in and a low you know when you see higher highs higher lows getting out if there's a lower high right yes. a lower low but then you also said with candles you can't do it just that you have to think about the whole context of the candle right and I think yeah. it goes back to something you you said a while ago that I've really taken to heart. Whatever gets you into the trade should be the same thing getting you out of the trade. Okay. And so I think, um, you know, obviously not always going to be the case, but I just think that goes back to what you just said about yes. the candles. Uh, so I just wanted to touch on that. And I think Bang. Uh, really solid advice. And thank you always for um, for sharing that and hopefully can help some people with um, entries and exits because it's never going to be set in stone. It's really going to depend on your trading style and what you're seeing as long as you stick to it. All right, we're going to hit the dollar club for my main man, Adam Deleuze. My man is in the dollar club. What are you in the dollar club on, Adam? Uh, shout out to you, good print there. Let let the chat know what you're looking at, so they can uh, they can involve themselves in some winning trades as well. All right, last one on the list here: the bullish kicker candlestick pattern. What is this one all about? This is the bullish candle is a candlestick pattern where a bearish candle is immediately followed by a strong bullish candle. The bullish kicker uh, the bullish kicker pattern forms when the bullish candle gaps up and breaks and closes above the previous uh, bearish candle's high. So you can see that here. So what, we, what preceded the making of this uh, candlestick pattern is a downtrend. Then you have a new red candle to make a new low. But after that new candle to make a new low, what you have is a big gap up into the uh, green candle there. So the opening price of the green candle has to be gapping up above the the close uh, sorry the opening price of the red candle that's what you're looking for there and this indicates that buyers have made a comeback with a strong desire to push the prices further up it also represents the quick shift in sentiment of market participants all right the pros of this pattern are is it's, it's a very strong pattern owing to the gap uh, and it's also supported by strong amounts of volume. So when we were talking about earlier, the three outside up and the three inside down, you should be using RSI or MACD as a confirmatory indicator. In this particular instance, what you're looking for is above average volume, okay, to confirm the breakup. And that's not unusual because you're gapping up here. If you're gapping up, typically you will have above average volume. And the average volume is, again, it's a subjective thing. I'm not talking about looking at, um, you know, like if we're trading intraday, our analysis should be with the volume candles on that specific day. If we're trading on the daily chart, we should be doing an analysis of volume on the daily chart. So it's going to be contextual, all right? The cons of this pattern are that sometimes it does not, sorry, it, it does not occur most of the time. So it has a very low appearance rate and sadly traders beginner traders especially can confuse this pattern with a gap up pattern now we'll talk about gaps likely a little bit next week but what you should know 
just for uh, our purposes right now, is that gaps have three types of gaps, okay? There's the initiation gap, the continuation gap, and the exhaustion gap. Oftentimes, this particular bullish kicker pattern will be misinterpreted for an initiation gap, right? And that's a bit of an issue there. So you kind of have to uh, be a little bit more, I guess, uh, adept at these patterns in order to uh, maybe get it right. All right, let's look at PayPal here. What a bottom this is forming on PYPL. We're out of yeah, uh, not even half the position. We still have more than half the position left. And so if, again, nothing changes for me. If it breaks down below 6140, I'll get out of that. Let's look at Amazon real quick here. After that huge move up on Amazon, I'm pleased as punch with this trade on Amazon. I'm, I'm only displeased at the fact that it didn't hold 160. So it was definitely a failed breakout. And when you reflect on it uh, and you look a little bit at the five minute, I mean, this topping tail candle, I mean, look at this. This is a spinning top if I've ever seen one. We were just talking about this candlestick pattern like a couple of days ago. That is your spinning top right there. And look what preceded it, Adara. Oh my gosh, a beautiful upgrade. What a surprise, what Shocker. a surprise, yeah. So spinning top has the effect of pushing uh, AMZN back below 160, but we'll have to wait and see what it does at VWAP. VWAP on my chart, 159 and a quarter. Yeah, I mean, congrats on that trade. I am pleased this punch for you. you. Uh, the punch getting special delivered, expedited by Amazon there. Um, so congratulations on that. I Apple. did, I, I've been dancing around here in AXP. I took this, uh, but taking this one short on and off. I took it, uh, like I said, I was really interested in that 20140 area because it was massive support. It was the bottom of that trend line earlier. It was also what I was using as the out for my long. So then I decided to use this as a point of entry for the short because, you know, um, to quote 50 Cent, uh, switch the style up. And if they hate, then let them hate and watch the money pile up. Although no money is piling off this is paper money but the point remains right basically just watching not not being too committed to either side i've been trading this one on and off i would say mostly successful trades um except for a little bit of a swoop down earlier here today but generally basically what i'm just doing is i'm taking this one um short every time we get to that 2140 area i got back in and they short a little bit later at this uh vwap hold because i noticed we we were holding vwap like a glove that 2330 not really going above i would like us to more decisively break 200 that would give me a little bit more confidence in this trade that being said we are about 30 paper pennies in the money. I want to see what we do here. I, I want to make sure we don't recover at VWAP. That would be my biggest area of interest here. And then in terms of like a stop loss where I get out, I, if we decisively break back above that VWAP, if we get into that 260, 250 area, because that was an interesting area for AXP earlier, we are uh, curling back towards VWAP, so we're going to have to wait and see what happens here. In the meantime, while well, AXP decides um, what direction it would like to cash in at here, so I, credit, bad credit card pun, um, Meta is still really interesting to me. I did take this Meta short because um, we did see that, that the same kind of candle Sharif was talking about. We have this, uh, albeit in a slightly different context, this top tail uh, candle. Saad Mamu would say, was that a Kanye line? Uh, they, yeah, so it was, I think 50 said it first, but then Kanye did say it in good life. So it, it's a little bit of both. Um, and thank you very much. I'm, hap I'm happy someone got the reference there. But basically, yeah, Meta... Um, Failed 396. I got in right above 396. This looks a little head and shouldersy, but we don't want to like you know diagnose a pattern before it comes to fruition, right? That being said, if we see another 396 failure, I'm going to take some profit out around that. Uh, I'm going to get back in and take some profit out around that 395 20ish area. I like this area because that was where we did have that consolidation earlier and a bit of a move back up to the upside. So that is definitely um, my area. of interest for Meta. Also, I was at an event at TIFF yesterday, and the guy kept calling Meta Meta. And I was like very, yeah, I figured you, I hadn't told you yet. And I was like, this is the thing that I figured would upset you. He was like, Meta. Was he high? No. <laughs> he was like some exec. And he was why like, was he, why I don't know, but he was it calling Meta. it Meta. Was he Australian? No, he was Canadian. Meta, mate. Yeah, that would, make, that would make sense if he was Australian there, I guess, no with idea. the accent. Yeah. But, but anyways, the point is I thought that was the kind of funny <laughs> that it was Meta. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so that is, yeah, Meta coming into that um, 395.20. We'll have to see what we do here um, because I think that, that is kind of a clear area here. I think, I know Sean was short Meta earlier. Congratulations to anybody on this Meta short. Um, what time will BSTG or BTSG open? Is there, how do you find out I, IPO opening time? I'm going to find this out. Yeah, uh, IPO opening times are you, you and uh, you won't know. You won't be able to find no, it. Okay, it'll, sorry about it'll that, come guys. Into whenever it feels like I'm. Guys, Apple is absolutely flushing. All right, we're down. We just broke down below 193. We are now below support level one on the pivots. Apple 
having a big, big move down. And this was a good support level over here, guys. 193.80, look oh, at that I IB low. We held that level, but that level has since come and gone aggressively. Apple is really headed to the downside here. 192 and two thirds. I'm seeing information coming here for, um, from the EU about them really sticking it to Apple if the changes um, don't, don't please the European regulator. Uh, the Katina man's printing on those cues short, but basically this is what the the he the, uh, the headline is: Apple faces strong action if App Store changes fall short, says EU's uh, Brett. I don't know who this individual is, nor do I care. Um, but there you go, more intervention uh, from the European Union. It's like it's like this is like the the thing to do now for governments: just intervene, intervene. Speaking of the European Union. They, the EU, uh, I'm getting this on my phone right now, plans to develop a multi-billion euro satellite system to counter the dominance of Elon Musk's Starlink. Apparently, they are displeased with Elon for not providing Starlink to Ukraine's military f during the 2022 conflict, so they want to build their own. What could go wrong with a government-funded project like this? I don't see anything that could go wrong. They're going to be profitable from day one. It's all going to work really well. Fantastic. I can't wait for the EU there to do that. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see what we get there. But Apple on the way down, Katina, man. 192.50, Apple in a full state of tank. Where does Apple find some support? Let's have a, let's have a look here at the 15-minute, see where we could find some support levels. Uh, so right now we're at that 192.50 level. Do we have anything around here? Yeah, I mean, that 192, it's the whole dollar psychological level, but uh, I really have no idea. There's just... Too much uh, incremental price action on the way up to see like a discernible level here. I'm going to go ahead and say 192 is where I'd be looking, but uh, we just broke through um, support level one on Apple. Support level two takes us all the way down to 191 and a third on pivot. So uh, we'll have to see how that ends up doing. But look at that price action on Apple, guys, all the way down, all the way down. Let's go back uh, to PayPal here. Yeah, we just got a, a move back up into 61.80, but absolutely nothing there. Still, still positive on it. Uh, about whatever, 10 pennies in the money as we come back down to 60s, but not going to take this one out unless it breaks 40s. It's holding really well. Yeah, like that's a really, a really nice um, trade. And, you know, certainly I, I still, that it did shock the world yesterday with what the stock did. I, who knows about the event? Because it's funny, I heard less about the event, which is mostly just some AI innovations and stuff, and less about the shocking of the world, which is just kind of interesting there. Meta did fall below my area of interest at 390, or I guess fall into my area, because we broke that 395.30. Jameson saying Meta, so let's look at this. Also, some people were saying Meta because it rhymes with beta, so maybe that's why he was saying Meta, but yeah, I just thought that was kind of interesting, and I know, I thought you would find that interesting, because I know you have the Nevada video we've talked about uh, this. Yeah, I figured, I that. Okay. second I heard that I was like I, I wanted to know Sharif's thoughts on this but yeah I think with Meta I want to watch it as we get towards VWAP because Meta was really you know hugging VWAP earlier today I also like this 394.50 area why because that was where we got that nice pop earlier then we fell back to the downside I think that's definitely an area of interest um Finch Jane saying Apple is rotten I don't know if that pun was intentional but I certainly like it someone else was saying you know like Apple earnings coming up certainly going to be interesting I know Sharif just looked at Apple I'm going to look at it for myself for a moment yeah okay yeah, we just fell here. Fell very much to the downside. A bit of a double top um, here at that, or like a we touched the top a couple times, this 194.50 area. Also, I did put this in the chat. BSTG, I have the order book uh, ready to go and set up. Thank you to Sean for getting that up for me. That one, we will see when this one starts moving and doing its thing, 21. So we're going to have to wait on this one. I'm also waiting on American Express to hopefully cash out to the downside on this one, um, still in the same year, still learning and growing. And certainly this, this market has taught me a lot this week. Um, some good days, some rough days. Yesterday, certainly a bit of a rougher trading day and just trying to kind of stick with it here. Uh, I got in at that oh, $200.30 $200 area. I had to be clear how I worded that because uh, that was where we had VWAP. We couldn't really eclipse it. Then we fell to the downside. Finally getting a decisive um, 
200 ish breakdown here. The one issue with this is like, you know, it's, I feel like it's kind of stopping at arbitrary levels. The one thing that makes me nervous about this trade is I don't have super clean levels here, but anywhere where we kind of saw these candles, um, this area actually, I do like this 196 area. Who knows if we'll get to 196? And why I like 196 is look, we close here, but we did have a wick up and then come back there to the close. Then we, we um, open here, go back down at you know, from this opening area, right? So for whatever reason, 196 could be a psychological level. Who knows if the trade, if, if the stock will even get to that area, right? But basically what I'm doing is I'm really keeping my eye on the order book, glued here and seeing what happens. This will definitely be a bit of a scalpulation style trade in that if I see something moving in a direction I don't like, we're gonna try to grab what profits we can get here on this AXP, almost um, a dollar or uh, almost a paper dollar in the money here. Finch Chain saying lots of long rat tails. Yeah, uh, this looks like when we're talking about this um, with the dark pools and we got into a bit of the history of dark pools when Obi and I, shout out to Obi for covering for Sharif when he was sick a couple weeks ago, we did talk about those dark pool wicks. So I think that looks like a little bit of what is going on on this AXP. So I think this is, um, this is what's happening here. We're gonna have to see if we continue uh, to curl down to the downside mm -hmm. from this area. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this 199.50, it looks like we could be holding this a little bit. Uh, and I don't like that move back up here, but as long as we stay under 200, I will be happy. Saad saying, I like the cover at 184. Yeah, I like, that's a, that's a key area. That's a, that's a good idea um, here on AXP. And I want to, this is the thing too, is I was going to even look at daily levels in this, but because we're at all time highs, oh, um, RIP my chart, give me a moment here. Uh, the real gravestone candle is what just happened to my chart. Oh. But we're going to pull that up in a moment. Um, but yeah, thank you for that, Saad. The thing is, too, like I said, I, I mostly pretty much trade in the midday because I do have other things I do um, afterwards. So, oh, this is NVIDIA. Let's look at AXP. Oh, my God. I've been in this trade so many times today. Yes, yeah, so the thing is, too, yeah, I think I see what you mean about 184 because 184 is certainly an interesting area for AXP. We'll see if it even gets down there. But, yeah, like I said, I'm going back to the old scalpulating style for this trade. Basically, what I see in the book, if I see us curling back up, I will take some profits here because I like where this is going, and I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this trade. I do have to say. Oh, sorry, 194. Thank you, Saad. Yeah, that, I mean, 194 makes sense too, but I see what you mean about 194. Like I said, I, I, I'm going to watch what we do at 196, but I see what you mean too with that 194. That was certainly the area from whence we fell a little bit earlier and then kind of curled back up. So thank you so much, um, you know, everybody in the chat always for your takes on this. We're curling back a up a little bit towards VWAP, so I'm going to see what we do here. I, I have a really small position, so if I take profit, I basically have to take out the whole thing here, which is what makes me a bit nervous. I might take this out, and then if we get back to VWAP, go back in again. But I, I just want to I'm gonna be really cognizant of what we do Bang. as we approach that 200. Um, here's a little headline coming vis-a-vis uh, -vis Benzinga over here with respect to Apple. I don't think it's really, like we already talked about the, the bad headline for Apple already with respect to the uh, EU and the recent changes to the App Store. But this one, interesting here. Apple's proposed App Store, new App Store model for its users in the European Union could potentially cost Meta and other developers millions of dollars in yearly payments. Essentially, um, developers who want to use the third-party App Store or payment providers in the EU will have to pay Apple what they call a core technology fee. And that core technology fee is going to cost them I don't know, what, what, what is the, the cents in, in euro? Like half um, a euro. Pen? No, no, because no, I know that's I'm being British. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the pen. In, yeah, I don't even know what the cents are called in euro, but it's half a euro. Euro cents, eh? It's euro dollar. Yeah, oh, yeah. good, oh, good call, yeah. But nobody calls it the euro dollar. Euro cents? I don't know, actually. Not. I'm not sure. I was just in Rome. <laughs> the Katina Man was just in Rome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's zero across the board, says uh, Big Patty Ice. Essentially here, you're going to have to pay 50, uh, or sorry, a half, uh, half a euro for every annual or, or for every first installation uh, over 1 million in the past 12 months. So you're going to have to be paying a bit more money. That's obviously not good for uh, some of these other developers. Maybe not as bad for Meta because they're just so big. It may not affect their P&L, but maybe for some of the, uh, the other smaller developers in there, that could definitely affect their balance sheet. So I'll have to wait and see what they do. But Apple on the way down, guys. This was, you know, just a dead cap bounce. Let's call a spade a spade off that 192.50. And we are headed back down again. 
This is going to be interesting here if we break that 192.50. Could we maybe get a flat bottom break through that half dollar for maybe a 192 touch? It looks like the futures no no bottom right now. We're awfully close, maybe into making a 17.5 touch. We got uh, a 17.5 touch or almost a 17.5 touch this morning on um, at around 8 8:05 a.m. So about you know, almost 25 minutes before we got PCE, we, we came down aggressively there to about 17,504 on the futures, and then it, you know, started trending back up. But we'll have to wait and see what we get here. The other one, CRBP, coming into that $35 level. This could be interesting as it's been uh, holding that 10 EMA on the five awfully well, and it just did a little bit of a touch on it right there. So I wonder if this could be an interesting entry here on CRBP, but it's awfully dangerous and trading it with any size could cause you a lot of money because uh, the spread is a 30 pennies right now and it's been wider at times. So we'll have to wait and see what we get there. What is everybody talking about in the chat? Alan saying NVIDIA short. Let's have a look. NVDA just bounced into 610. I'm assuming uh, what you're looking for is a dead cat bounce here, maybe like uh, the likes of what Apple's doing. What you do have though, Alan, is this interesting area over here where you kind of bottomed out at that 61, sorry, 611.25, maybe 612-ish area. If it comes into VWAP, maybe you could be looking to short off of VWAP rejection. Uh, NVIDIA has obviously been strong the last few days. It is down today, a bit less than 1%, 0.88% right now. If this comes back into resistance, formally support, this could be an interesting short on NVIDIA. Good call. Yeah, there. no, sorry, <laughs> I totally missed oh, the vote on that one. Yeah, NVIDIA, NVIDIA's been interesting. I kind of got, uh, was jumping around this name a little bit earlier. Uh, let me, yeah, I want to look at NVIDIA now too for my, yeah, okay, I, yeah, I see what you mean. Like, we're certainly an interesting area here. Um, yeah, so just, here's what I was saying, because uh, yours has way too many dark pool wicks, I think, for you to honestly see it clearly. Uh, here is what I'm saying about, look at this. So this is why I think it's a good one. So look at this trough over here, we trough, we bounce off VWAP, we bounce back up, and then we break VWAP over here. Now, if we come back into VWAP, could we get that rejection, former support, resistance thing? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, no, I see what you yeah. Thank you because my chart's yeah. a little bit yeah. harder to see, Way so thank you. Way too many dark pools there. Thank you so much um, for that one. Yeah, I mean, I think Meta, too, still kind of um, trying to hang on to this 395 by the skin of its teeth. Oh, um, part of my chart went au revoir here. Yeah, yeah we're gonna have to see, um, also, AXP um, came back to 200 and just as quickly fell back below this 196.60. I feel like I'm on the right side of the law, so to speak, here in this short for the time <laughs> being. <laughs> um, uh, but right. yeah, we're going to have, yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I am okay. Thank you. Uh, we will have to kind of see what occurs um, on this short. I, I wish, honestly, you know, sometimes I, I like to take a smaller position sometimes to protect myself. But in this case, having a bigger position might have been nice because then I could have taken some profit and I would have felt a bit more secure in the trade, right? Because there would have been a little bit of um, security there, a little bit yeah. of a beak wetter. So I think that's a big lesson here. Um, sometimes it's actually kind of smarter to, to add a little bit within reason, right? And then you have a little bit so you can kind of spread it along the way. But there we go. This is, um, yeah, the AXP trade. Not too much to report here. Um, again, if I, I like how we're both in these finance-related trades. All right, I'll yeah. just take over for a sec because the Chilean nightmare told me your battery is Thank on you. the fritz there. Uh, shout out to Aaron and Joanna Brewster. Sharif, Dollar Club, Tesla short. We're going to hit the Dollar Club for you, my friend. Uh, looking for 180. Joe, it's always me. She, so it's Joanna. It's not Andrew. I love how you guys have a shared account, though. Shout out to you guys. The, uh, Katina, man, do you do a shared account with uh, your significant other, or that's uh, it's no bueno? I don't know. Social media, uh, emails. <laughs> I don't have all your social media. I have you on the gram. Yeah, he gave me the nod. All right. You know, he does not have a shared account. There's no shared accounts in the Katina household, baby. So shout out to you, Aaron and Joanna Brewster. Good print sure. on Tesla as you get that, you know, that VWAP rejection at 184. Try to bounce back up above there. No go though. Apple, man, continuing to head down. Guys, chart, if we're able to. 192, um, 27, the low of day right now. It's below support level one on my pivots. Apple 
headed down aggressively. The other one that's interesting here, some other stronger names, forget about Apple for the weak names. We are getting interesting VWAP holds on both Meta and Amazon. So we'll have a look at this. So we, we took that Amazon nice long through a break of 160, gives up the entire ghost. It's a V-shaped retracement, but it is holding up at VWAP. So if we do get a market bounce, maybe Amazon bounces here. Keep your eye on that. The other one that's holding at VWAP and even more bullish because it's not coming all the way down into it and it's wicking just a little bit above VWAP is Meta. 395.50 is where it's at now. High day, 396.80. This one could be finding some support at this level as well. So look at those two if you're looking for anything for a long, but it really has been more of a short kind of day today on these Meg 7 names and, uh, and the future, quite frankly, okay? So we're gonna pack our patients uh, and maybe look for a better trade than the one that we have on because we have PayPal. We've been nursing this PayPal trade for a while. Uh, we're 30 pennies in the money on it at the moment, but you know it's not breaking through that 62 with any vigor. It did get a break earlier of 62. It was a quick wick and then right back down, only spent about 10 minutes above 62 and then we got to move right back down, but it held. It held that level and made a higher low. So if this one continues to trend to the high side, you know, I'm gonna try to pay, be patient with this one, but if it gives up the ghost, it gives up the ghost, breaks that 61.40, I'm out. Zion Lala got into PayPal with you. It's not breaking above 62. Yeah, just fin literally just finished saying that. But yeah, I agree with you uh, completely. Uh, the only thing that's kind of keeping me in this trade or keeping me optimistic that this trade does because does uh, remain valid because we're positive on it is the higher lows that are uh, being put in today. And again, if you're just joining us, the reason I got into this trade is because I was looking for a gap fill off yesterday's big breakdown midday there on um, PYPL. Uh, what are they using? Diego, Diego Herrera asks, we are using a program called PPRO8 is proprietary to day trade the world, uh, which is a prop trading firm, a proprietary trading firm, and it's all in-house software that we make over here. On the other side, we're, on the other side of this office is where all the software developers are on the other side of the company. They make all that kind of stuff. So that is the software we're using, Adara. It is, yeah, um, and thank you so much for that here. Um, also, yeah, so Greg Usler saying PayPal squeeze. I was gonna say, I like too how it's coiling to the upside. Like, I think it it looks like it could spring what? up, oh. right? For, PayPal? So yeah, yeah, I think it's like a really good, like I totally we'll get see. what you're saying and yeah. I agree with Greg Usler saying PayPal squeeze. Um, hopefully, hopefully, I really hope it, because that would, that would be a really nice look there and I would be pleased to punch. Like also, um, so uh, yeah, like, AXP, I tried to, I thought I did get reloaded and then I didn't. I was, um, it was, it was only a dream. It was all a dream. Shout out to Biggie. Um, at, because yeah, we still cannot break VWAP. So I'm going to chill in this trade for a little bit longer as long as we stay below here. I did want to add a little bit so I could, par, you know, parcel it out on the way down, but we'll have to see what happens. In the meantime, though, we can uh, get started with the lesson, I guess, because we are back at 1 p.m. Cool. So I, yeah, let's uh, get started on that. And I have all the and I all the, have all the graphs um, or the images ready to go here. Give me uno momento, por favor. Uh, let's, oh, nice. yeah, let's go. I got them already here. Beauty. So gravestone doji is the first one here. As Sharif said, when you see it, you're dead. Um, but I think more accurately, you know, someone was someone was saying in the chat, I believe it was Finch Jane saying, if you see this, your account is six feet under. <laughs> but I think either way, I think too, like, and it shows, you, you didn't have quite a gravestone, but you had something... Um, si oh, thank you. Thank you. No problem. You had something similar to a gravestone in that Amazon trade, and that's why you got out where you did, right? Because basically it shows this, the buyers are a skosh exhausted. We have a nice little run up here, and then we have this, this candle to the upside, which basically shows, hey, there's a lot of move to the upside, and it all, you know, no move to the downside here. We basically pretty much, I don't want to say flat bottom because it sounds so much like flat bottom break, although I guess that is what's happening. But basically, all this run to the upside and then followed by all of this nice little movement to the downside here. So that shows, and you might, again, you might, for some of these, you do want to wait for confirmation. But this does show here that, hey, like the buyers are a little bit exhausted. They have a little bit of energy, but not enough to keep it at a certain level, right? So that's what is going on with the gravestone uh, doji. Some traders will interpret this as a sign to take a bearish trade in the stock. And also, um, as Sharif was saying, you know, if you're in a bullish uh, example with the Amazon trade, if you're in a bullish trade, you might want to use this as an opportunity to, to exit, right? Bang. Exit stage left. Uh, so I think that's certainly of note here. 
Um, basically, some of the pros of this is it shows potential bearish reversal and can be really easily identified. Like you look at this and you're like, hey, something is amiss, right? Something's a little funky going on here. Um, but the cons with this chart is it can generate false trading signals uh, because it's kind of a rare, si uh, rare pattern so people will identify them where they aren't present. And then that causes a little bit, you can get into a little bit of a pickle that way. Yes, that would be that gravestone. Uh, now it's time for the dragonfly doji. Doge. Uh, <laughs> Dogecoin, okay. Doge Can we scandal. restart the topics Chilean nightmare, please? Thank you. No, says Ram Ram. <laughs> But yeah, um, so Dragonfly Doji uh, basically shows potential bullish trend reversal uh, and this one at the bottom of a price chart, so exact opposite of the gravestone, flip it and reverse it there. And traders will basically look at this as at, you know, a sign that we have run out of selling power because what happens is so you open and close at the same level and that's also your opening level is going to be your high. Then we flush to the downside and then we come right back up. So that shows, hey, the sellers may be running out of steam here. Uh, we kind of had their last hurrah. So certainly an area to keep an eye on <laughs> to get um, entry here. Um, and then uh, I think that that's certainly of, of note. Uh, and basically some of the pros of this is it can give traders an early sign of a potential bullish trend reversal. And again, you can identify it uh, easily on the naked chart. But the con is much like the opposite of the grave, or I guess the same as the grave here, it can generate false signals because they are aware. I know someone earlier in the chat was saying, it's funny because dragonflies are not very rare, but this dragonfly doji certainly is. And it's, you know, I think also too, we were saying, it used to be cognizant of that for false signals. But also I think if you do see a real one in the wild, that would be a sign, hey, this is, this is really strong. This is certainly something you need yep. to watch out for, which I think is, is really important. Um, and now we have the three outside up, which someone was explaining in the chat is basically, yeah, it's because you have uh, three candles and then we end up on the outside going up. That was what, that's what that refers to. I believe that was Allison um, Mulcahy. So thank you so much to that. So this one, bullish reversal pattern, the opposite of the pregnant lady. As you said, the pregnant lady is looking in the opposite direction here. That was the... Harami candle we were talking about because Harami yes. I guess means pregnant it means a couple of things in a different yeah. languages as people were saying but it does mean pregnant in Japanese and so uh, basically instead of this being pregnant with movement to the upside or downside as that candle it first basically it shows hey we kind of we're kind of running out of steam it's almost like a bullish engulfing with that other candle to confirm it Bang. so you have that that movement and then you have the outside up you've got another candle moving upwards continuing to transcend the movement we made on that first green candle showing hey the long is the longs maybe not wrong and there might be a little bit more potential here and so this one you can find in the bottom of the chart you really want to look for a the first candle being a bearish candle looking to continue the established trend then you have a bullish candle so we we gap down here and then close uh, eclipsing all of the movement in that bearish trend and then as we said the third candle looking to continue that move up but one of the cons for this is um oh sorry a pro really strong reversal pattern and high a high probability rate should you spot it but it is, it can generate false signals like all of these trading tools. And with all of these, you do maybe want confluence with other patterns, right? With other indicators to show this is not alone and it's not on its own. I think that's uh, certainly really important here as well. Then we have um, the three inside down, which is going to be um, exact opposite here of the three outside. And I like this one because it shows in the context. So basically what you have here, bearish reversal pattern formed at the top of the price chart. First candle, you have this bullish pattern continuing the trend. Then you have a little teeny tiny uh, bearish candle here that is contained um, within the movement of the bullish candle and then a big move to the downside on that third candle here. I like that this one looks slightly different than the three outside um, up because they're not going to always look exactly the same, right? And basically what happens is too, is you, want, you do want that third candle to take out all the gains we made in that first candle, right? To show, hey, the bears are really taking over and they're really eating up this movement to the upside, trying to take us further south. And so this one, uh, basically, yeah, like I said, uh, we, we see bulls trying to take further movement and the bears kind of overwhelming here to the downside. And you might wanna, as they suggest, set your stop loss above that bear, uh, bullish trend. Why? Because it shows, hey, if, if we go back up here, then the bulls are clearly winning out again because we've gone beyond where we closed that green candle that, that got us to notice this trend in the first place, right? And you might wanna enter where you really do see that candle to the downside and that confirmation that we're heading down. Like I said, that's what I like about these three candle patterns. The confirmation is really built in, which I think is very key here. Also, I'm just gonna take a moment. I love this, uh, Zion Lala in the chat. It was all a dream. I'm burning steam because PayPal wouldn't take high side beam. I didn't say that. I couldn't quite cop Biggie's flow there because it wasn't, you know, exact. But I mean, we know we know what song we're talking about. And this market's certainly been juicy today and this whole week. So there we go. Um, long leg a doji. Uh, second, 
Or I guess, yeah, sorry, we're going to skip to the, um, I, I think I took this one and we're not even talking about it. Look, at there we go. Bullish kicker. Yeah. Save the best for last. My yes, apologies there. Um, so the bullish kicker, this one, uh, people were saying the opposite of this. So apparently the bearish one is called the cow tipper, which I did not realize, but that'd be very cool if true. Uh, this one cool. indicates that buyers are basically making a comeback. You have a strong desire to push the market prices up. We have a movement down. The bears have overwhelmed. And then we have a big gap to the upside Ooh. here. And this can you can see this on a naked price chart. You can see this. I think it's pretty clear to any price chart, right? And basically what this shows is the really quick sentiment change. And what we do want to is confluence with volume. We want to see volume setting up like, hey, we have yeah. this movement and, and lots of people are feeling it. Uh, so the volume push and this push uh, decisively to the upside, kind of need these together. Uh, pro of this pattern, super strong, and especially, like I said, strong when supported by volume. But the con is, like a lot of these, a bit rarer, and so it can be kind of confused with the gap up pattern. And like we said, we'd like to talk some gaps coming yeah. up too, which certainly uh, would be of we interest. Will. Absolutely. We Adara, go. we should probably mention that we are brought to you by Benzinga Pro. Sign up today for 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders with the code TTV, all capital letters, by the way. Use the link in the description for the show um, and then go to check out for your discount. 50% off, baby, Benzinga. Adair, you want to show them uh, the Benzinga yeah. Pro? Yeah, thank um, you for getting this. I was just a, I got Yeah, that no worries. Because I, I, I haven't been doing surge. I can take it off your hands for a couple of days. Okay. Yeah, Adara yeah. is using Benzinga all the time. Always. She creates the watch list with it. We find breaking news items with it as well, things that are coming in midday that she reports on at the big desk. Benzinga Pro, a hell of a um, utility, not just for a scanner, not just for a news blotter, but to create watch lists and many other features. Shout out to Benzinga Pro, great platform there. And I've been using them on and off, by the way, guys, since basically I started trading in 2020. So Yeah, it's awesome. It's really helpful. Yeah. Adara, we pop oh, back the up. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. yeah, link yeah. in the description, sure. Uh, we pop back up into that uh, 6190-ish area again here on PYPL. And I wet my beak, uh, guys, if we're able to, uh, wet my beak there because, well, I don't know how long, you know, we're gonna stay at this level. And number two, we've had problems breaking through 62 bucks already. We were there for about 10 minutes, um, maybe around noon hour. Uh, we weren't able to hold that level. There was that V-shaped retracement back into that 61 and a half mid halves. I'm talking about the 61 mid 50s where we've since been ascending again, incrementally making higher highs and higher lows for an accumulation into 62. Whether or not we break 62, an entirely different story. Hence why I am uh, de-risking at these levels because I'm unsure of, uh, of whether or not we continue to ascend or not. And already we're getting more uh, more resistance at this level. We ascended right now into 61.98, 61.97. Those are two five minute candles at that level, but we haven't been able to break 62. I've been very positive on it, wetting my beak all at these levels, but I was definitely looking for a much more aggressive move to fill the gap from yesterday into that 62.75. We'll have to pack our patience to see if we get it positive on it right now. So we'll see. Um, what else is there to chat about here? Someone was asking me about this VWAP trade on AMZN. I think it was Zion Lala. And shout out to you, Zion, because, you know, I like this too, but I like Meta a little bit more. And here's why. Look, we're really straddling that VWAP area, making lows into the 159 mid-teens. That's on Amazon, right? And we had that huge topping tail candle uh, that we call a spinning top. And we're kind of sideways consolidation, maybe here for a flat bottom break through that 159 and a quarter. You don't necessarily see that though on Meta. Like look how Meta actually just bounced aggressively off VWAP at that 394.50-ish area. And we haven't actually had any wicks touching VWAP itself. So if I'm inclined to get in on a VWAP trade, it is more likely to be Meta than Amazon, at least for me, okay? Uh, everything else is sub VWAP at the moment. NVIDIA sub VWAP, Tesla is sub VWAP, Apple's way below VWAP, Microsoft as well is sub VWAP. So the trades for me for any VWAP dip trades here on the Meg 7, not looking good unless your name is Meta. So not gonna get involved in that sadly. 
Did we get a, a 62 touch here? No, we're still in the 61 mid 90s on PYPL. What is everybody else looking at? AKA AK says, why not use fibs? Haven't you used, haven't you, have, haven't seen you use them for determining supply resistance? I responded to you, my man. Did you not receive my response in the chat? Uh, look for that red tag, because that means somebody's tagged you and they're responding to your question. I told you I don't typically use them. Uh, they are not my preferred method of determining support and resistance. I typically like to use price action as well as possible chart patterns. For, uh, for equities, I, I only exclusively use uh, price, uh, price levels for the futures. Isayu, what do we think about Akon breakout? Yeah, convict music. And we know we up front. All right, we were, we were talking about this. Adara, Neil, <laughs> and I in the morning, and we were, I was singing convict music uh, before we got on camera. And this one's giving up the ghost, okay? It's below VWAP. For me, it's not a long, I can't take this long until and unless it gets above VWAP and holds above VWAP. Now, you had a decent trade on this, I would say, if you had been able to take out the pre-market high. But this one made all the higher highs in the pre. And then the bell rang and it did absolutely nothing. So there's two rules that I have for taking these small cap gappers long, okay? One, they have to break through the pre-market high after the bell. That's number one. Number two, they have to be above VWAP. And then if those two rules are met, then I can actually go into the specifics of that particular equity and see how I can get in. Whether it's a price pattern, sorry, uh, a chart pattern, candlestick pattern, uh, price levels on support and resistance, whatever. But if those two elementary rules are not met, I'm not gonna get involved in a small cap capper. And um, Akon, sadly at the moment, is below VWAP and it did not break the pre-market high, so I will not be involving myself in that bad boy. Jeremy Newman, save broke HOD. Let's look at save. We were yelling about save, Brendo and I, this morning at the big desk because of that new thing that came in from JetBlue saying that the terms of the contract hadn't been met, this, that, and the other. There we go. You're absolutely right. Save above six bucks, um, which was important, and above that six and a half consolidation top. Look how long we consolidated at that six and a half, 645 level. It's now broken through six and a half. Can it hold it on a closing basis? Now, look, I get this is a mean reversion trade. I respect mean reversion traders, but I'm a trend trader. And when this bad boy was down 20% at the lows, 9% now, it is not my kind of trade. Uh, but yeah, absolutely kill it on it, especially if you had that six long. You're printing big on that. It's on its way up now. It looks like it's going to hold six and a half. Uh, is save. It's up at that almost 660 now. So good look for save here as it recovers off that bottom. Um, what else we got? Blame it on me, says James Dell. I have no idea what that is. Sean, did you record. see so Sean's sticky note in the chat? There's a, an individual by the name of Sean Sticky Note. Voice of an angel. Yeah, right. More like voice of, yeah, I can't say it on um, on the blockchain, time to short Netflix or what? Yeah, let's have a look at NFLX. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a monster mover, uh, quite frankly, um, this week, owing to uh, earnings, obviously. Let's have a look at Netflix over here. Yeah. Yeah, he's up there, Sean. Sticky note. Sean's sticky note. Sean's sticky note. <laughs> he is your sticky note. The Katina man is pleased. There you go. <laughs> he says, what's up, my guy? Look in the chat there, Sean Stikino. Yeah, look, uh, on the blockchain, not a bad look, man. That 573 hold, you have a bit of a curl down, a bit of a doji candle here forming, which shows, you know, a candle of indecision and a possible move back up. You are above VWAP. You didn't quite make it down into 572, which is where VWAP is on my chart. It's, it's not a bad look. It's not a, am I going to get involved on Netflix? Likely, I probably won't, only because it's just so spready at the moment. But look at it gun up there. It's already up two bucks. You dip there at 573, and right just like that, we're at 575 and a third. So you're up. That's, that's a, actually a nice move. Here comes 576 on Netflix, it looks like. Uh, Netflix getting a nice pop right now. I don't know what the future's doing. Is it moving with the future? No, not really. It's, an, an, it's a Netflix-specific move here, it looks like. So good luck for you on Netflix. I probably won't be participating in that. Uh, 
Let's see what else people are talking about there. Trading Bulldozer. <laughs> I like that name. What do you think? Can Tesla reach 180 today? You want to have a look Let's at that, Adair? Let's look at Tesla, yeah. Oof. I what? mean, I'm not going to say, never say never. Sure. Um, shout out to Justin Bieber. This 186 top, we hit it. We've only had lower highs since then. Like I said, we looked a little bit compressed low earlier. Uh, then we kind of had a new lower low off that 180 three-ish area. I think that 183.8 was what I identified. Then we flew lower. Then we actually, we had a lot of interesting uh, movement around this 183. Broke below 183. Now we're just kind of dancing around 183. Let's look at that daily to see where we hit yesterday. Um, David Geist asking where about the sticky note. You can find um, it, the sticky yeah. note on, oh yeah, okay. I just put, all I think you have to do, I'm pretty sure, guys. Yeah, you're right. Uh, is it exclamation point sticky note? Or yeah, yeah, it's already did here. Did it show up? Yeah. There it is. There you go, my friend, right there. Streamlabs just posted it. Click that link. You get the Katina Man sticky note every day. Yeah, sorry, I didn't see that you did no that. Worries, Thank you so much. No worries. But yeah, so, um, so Tesla here, um, I think certainly this 180 area, interesting. We got there yesterday. We also had like a little bit of a, a dip around this May 26th, 2023, that whole last, like, one of the last weeks in May, we had a nice little consolidation and then a sharp move up here. So I think 180 could be significant as an area off of which we bounce. But I think generally right now, in terms of just like purely what we had yeah. intraday to, to reflect on that as well, lower highs, lower lows, looks like we are falling down right now on this one. Also, I have two. I am in two trades. AXP, unfortunately, um, did kind of curl back up here. If we continue to bounce off VWAP, um, yeah, okay, it looks like we're bouncing off again. I should have, I should have added it to this position here. But every time I try to add it to um, 130, I just do not get filled. So that's what we got going on here on that AXP. Hopefully, we continue bouncing off VWAP. I maybe I'll add a little bit to this position. My only issue is if I do, I'll be DCAing to the downside. And I think this is probably key of like just make sure you have enough um, as many shares as you want going into the trade, right? Then you won't have to, to waffle around, and then you can just, you know, uh, have the, the beak wetters set along the pond, and you don't have to worry about having no, <laughs> not, you know, no more position left. Yep. So, you know what? I actually will add a little bit to this here. I just want to wait and see how we hold at this, this 230, but we rejected off it at least thrice now. Shout out to Obi um, there. But yeah, you know what? We're going right, to add. You said Obi, and I, I hit the bang button. Oh, yeah, there. confluence? Yeah, okay. yeah. You know, I'm only supposed to hit that when we say confluence, but. Sometimes I, I just hear Obi and then I hit the bang. Like, you're so like you, preparing. So yeah, I'm just so used to it by now. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Adair. Yeah, no worries. I mean, that all I have to say here is, yeah, this trade looking to Scotia abysmal. Hopefully, I don't like that we just kind of bounce off you up a little bit. I maybe this might have been an error in judgment. We're holding at 230 pretty well, so we're going to have to wait and see what happens there. Um, maybe I should have just gotten out earlier instead of, you know, holding on to this. Um, Let's talk about uh, NVIDIA now. We're kind of getting uh, out of my point of interest as well. I should have had my exit set at 6.10. Instead, I set it at 6.09, and then I watched it at 6.10 hold. I should have just gotten out there. Uh, Going to stop lamenting because, you know, it is what it is. All you can do is kind of go forward and hopefully make a new better trade. But it looks like if we make a decisive higher high here, which it looks like we're going Bet. to, I'm going to have to. Yeah, you said pump it. There we go. I think I have to exit this <laughs> video short. Oh, I'm sorry. That, I'm not oh, yelling okay. about that. I'm no, yelling about yeah, PayPal. Congrats yeah. PayPal. Yeah, congrats to PayPal. Congrats to PayPal. We did reject off that area, though, so I'm going to kind of see how we how we hold this because we haven't really decisively made a higher low yet. And I do think that inability to break VWAP is a good look. Really small share size in NVIDIA. Uh, so we'll have to see how that goes. How was PayPal? Let's it's good. PayPal. It's good. It's above 62 again uh, for I don't know how many times today. Can it hold 62? Question mark. That's really all I care about here, okay? We've been involved in this dang name uh, all afternoon, and what I really want is a 62 hold. I feel if we do get a decisive hold at 62 that we can definitely get that we can increase the chances of that gap fill, especially in the more liquid time of the day, once the whatever buying programs, algos, traders, whoever is gonna start buying this bad boy uh, could possibly push it back up. But once again, we're having issues with 62 bucks. Not surprised, de-risked a little bit there in the high 80s, mid 90s, and right at 62. I've got a beak wetter at 05s and 10s if it is to squeeze a little bit. It's up 2%, trying to fill the gap from yesterday, right back above 62 we go. Guys, I saw the Neil put this in the chat. He's, uh, people were yelling about a firm and upstart. They got this whatever boost for no, I, I don't wanna say no reason. I don't see a reason on my blotter. That's all I can say about that. I don't see 
the reason why we shot up on a firm from 62.84 all the way up there to 33.75, sorry, 32.84 to 33.75, rejecting off VWAP, and it's almost like the identical look for a firm. Look at this. You jump up off that 41.50 into 42, right to VWAP, and then you reject VWAP. So I'm not going to get too excited about these names, mainly because look what the chart is showing. Lower high, lower high, lower high, and another, you guessed it, lower high, okay? So let's change that trend. Let's start putting in some higher highs here, and then we can start talking about maybe taking these bad boys strong. Look, a firm's not bad on the day. It's up 3%. Uh, upstart is up 1%, but they are both looking awfully, you know, rejecty here. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Making up words as we go. Again, same thing with upstart, lower high, lower high, lower high, and rejecting off VWAP. So nice midday move for whatever reason here. Not really sure what uh, to uh, why this is doing what it's doing, but the point is I'm not going to get involved on these names until, you know, they can change the pattern that they've been following all day, which is lower highs ever since popping up there off the... Uh, off the open, okay? Uh, so back to PYPL, still can't break above 62 on any decisive basis, and down we go again into 61.90, 61 high 80s, 62 is a resistance level. I won't be convinced otherwise uh, until this one breaks on a closing basis, at least on a wider time frame, the five, the 10. I don't care about these one minute wicks through that level. We're gonna continue to print on it every time it comes into 62-ish area. We'll continue to delever and to take some shares off, but ideally, we want a 62 break on a closing basis. What else we got here, baby? NVIDIA says, Alan, dump it. And Adara is pumped about that because my girl Adara is short 61081. What's the look? Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, so actually I, I did I did reload. I was a little bit skeptical because I was like, oh, I don't want to, you know, accidentally add into a bad position, right? But I noticed we were really waffling around that 611. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to be decisive here. I'm going to stop waffling. I'm going to add to this position here. So that's kind of a, the, the dollar cost average here is at 610. Um, 81. I already do have um, a profit taker set at that 610.49 area, and then I have the rest ready to go right above that 610.610.01 because we've talked about this sometimes, especially these mega cap stocks, especially if they're a little bit spready, they have a hard time uh, grabbing hold of those whole dollar, those key levels. So I just want to give it a little bit of room to, to move here. Uh, we just missed that that 609, uh, 610.50, unfortunately, earlier. I thought we filled the last, it did not. So I'm going to keep an eye on this as long as we could, uh, don't make this higher high, though. And I'm also going to keep an eye on what we do in VWAP. I'm comfortable hanging out in this short. And I think this was a huge test of patience. I got really nervous here. We were about a dollar out of the money. But I was like, Adara, we haven't made a decisive higher high in a closing basis. We haven't really been able to decisively eclipse that 611.25 area. So just be patient. Um, th th you know, the trade is still valid. And that ended up um, working out OK there. So we're going to you know, stay there for the time being. AXP also deciding what it would like to be when it grows up. I added to this uh, position just because we had another failure of that VWAP. Looks like we might be stacking up a little bit to push above VWAP, which is making me a bit nervous. I might take out part of this position at 200 because uh, initially I had part of that ready to go at 199.70 because we were holding onto that pretty well, or not holding onto it, but we were able to kind of get to that area pretty quickly. The, the way to solve this problem would have just been to have the size I wanted in the first place, and then I would have just been able to get rid of the position when I wanted to. That being said, we just dropped about 20 pennies on AXP, so that is 20 paper pennies in the money-ish on this trade. Um, yeah, just kind of in these shorts, trying to wait for them to occur. Also, you know, I want to check on, speaking of shorts, I want to look at Levi's, uh, because I was looking at Levi earlier. Ooh, okay, the nice curl up here. We had that, uh, we were talking about candle patterns, huge reversal candle warning here at this almost $17, 9.45. We had this big move up. Earnings were, eh, guidance was, eh, but they did actually say that um, they are looking to lay off or reduce the workforce, I believe, 10 to 15% for corporate. So I think that was probably a nice sign for these um, markets. And then we kind of flew down. Uh, after that, I guess we ran out of momentum here because that was quite the run up. I remember seeing that at the big desk, like this is crazy. Then we had uh, this bottom around this 1520. Now we're coiling back to the upside. Nice look for Levi. I would not put on my jean shorts right here because this is a nice, <laughs> this is a nice take on this trade. I'll just come back to the desk. That's the first thing that I hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, also just got a profit taker in um, AXP where I said that 1975 holding the rest with interest around uh, 
or 19, 199.75. 19.75 would be a wild short in AXP, but I want to see what we do with that 199.75. Nvidia also coiling up in a way that has me shaking in my boots, just a skosh. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the future. We are very much towards the lows on the NQ. And the reason I'm looking at the future is because we're trying to figure out what the MAG7 names are going to do. Uh, as the MAG7 names typically move in conjunction with the future. But look at this. It's been quite, I don't want to say range bound, but it is kind of range bound. Look at this top over here where we had clearly defined tops right below yesterday's open. Okay, yesterday's closing print, uh, pardon me. So yesterday's closing price has been an absolute resistance level today on the NQ. Uh, 16, sorry, 17,634. That's yesterday's closing print. Guess what the high is today? Look at this double top, 17,632, fair? And then we come all the way down over here, look, and we find support at the exact same levels, that 17 mid, 17,5 mid-teens, right? 514, 513, 515, just in and around that area. So we're definitely holding these two different um, price levels and towards definitely the lower end. VWAP, I would say, kind of even towards the lower end, not even the midpoint. The midpoint's about that 17,575 area. But yeah, the futures have been kind of, uh, they popped up, now they're down. Not really sure what to make of it. Another possible though, flat bottom break here coming on Apple. So this first flat bottom break was that 194 on Apple, right? We had that consolidation sideways move with that 194 being kind of uh, the bottom area. You had a bit of bamboozlement because you went down to 193 and two thirds and you shot right back up into 194 only to reject 194 and make a huge move down into the mid 192s. And we're doing that same thing again. Look at this consolidation sideways move on Apple. At that 192 and a half bottom with that 190, let's just say 193 to the high side, 192.90 to the high side. So you get that consolidation bottom again. Could we see a big move down into 192, flat bottom break through 192 and a half into 192? So that's another possibility here on Apple, especially if the Fuge gives up the ghost and starts trending to the downside, to, uh, breaking through that 17.5, right? We've been seeing how we're straddling 17.5 from the high side, but uh, alas, uh, it is not to be yet on um, on this show. Maybe on the closing uh, the closing show. So we'll have to wait and see there. Uh, in with respect to PYPL, still 61 high 80s right now. We wet our beak through 62, but this one can't seem to stay above 62 on a closing basis. The only thing really keeping me optimistic about this trade, and I hate to remain optimistic when it's not warranted, but it's a succession of higher lows. You're not putting in any lower lows on PayPal. So every time we get up into 62 and we reject, we keep putting in higher lows. What is that a recipe for? It could be a flat top breakout because we know 62 is definitely a resistance level. But we're putting in these higher lows on our way up possibly again into 62. Now whether you get that or not is an entirely different story. Maybe you end up staying below 62 on a closing basis today. And that's entirely possible as well as well, but 62 will be definitely a level I'll be looking at on Monday if we're not able to take it on a decisive basis today. So that's what I have to say about that. Christopher Holcomb, look at the weekly too. You really think they're going to allow this to close red? Who's, who's they? Um, Scar Joe Rabbit. Um, what does he got to say? Maybe short travel, oil crazy strong. Yes, somebody else was pointing out oil Oil was awfully negative on the day today. It is now up 1%. West Texas Intermediate at 78 bucks. Let's bring in that side chart over there. Over here. Here is the look on oil. This is WTI. This is the March continuous contract. Uh, we were at 76.06 low. Now we're up in above 78 bucks. We broke through yesterday's high. So look at this. This is the uh, one, two, three, four day look here on oil. Higher lows, higher highs. Oil has been trending all week. Let's go to the 10 minute look here and see what we got. Yeah, man. I mean, we were at 72 on, what was that? Friday, bottom there at 72, now we're at 78. So oil incrementally making its way higher. I don't know if this has anything to do with the Middle East, but. Uh, it is definitely on its way up. Let's go to the half an hour look here. It was quite consolidated for a period, and then it really started making those higher lows and higher highs uh, earlier this week. So we'll keep an eye on oil. Shout out to you. Good call there. 
With respect to some of the oil equities, though, I mean, you have XOM Red, CVX Red, Oxy's marginally green, up 0.19. Devon also marginally green, up 0.21. So it's not like you're getting any flying names on any of the equity equivalents of oil. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait there. I'm just looking at the side chart here to see what's moving. Caterpillar is still above 300, which is good Ooh. news for me. Uh, that's Great. really it. Adara, what, uh, what do you got over there? Um, same same things. I'm kind of trying to keep a look at Jameson was mentioning Tesla and Tesla does look like we are trying to um, break below this 182.80 lower lows decidedly. Again, I said I think 180 could be possible based both on the daily and just this general downtrend here. But I want to wait and see what we do with this 182. Um, 80, you know, 182.75 area. Let's see if, if this becomes E long from here. But right now it's certainly E short. Um, Oh, Joanna Brewster saying Tesla trying hard to turn red. Yeah, I agree. It's certainly, I like the way you put it. It's like gritting its teeth. It's like we need to go to the downside. I think a decisive break kind of, again, a new lower low. I think by the point we, time we make a lower low, I think we would actually decisively then be in the red. And as I say that, Tesla's like, yeah, you think? I'm, I'm going to, we're, we're going to prove it. NVIDIA, still, I'm still in this short because we're having a really hard time breaking above that 611.50. Every time I'm like, you know, trying to get the, the finger to cancel this order, I'm like, mm -hmm. then we, we reject off that 611.50 again. I am nervous about these higher lows. I should have just gotten out at 610 instead of waiting for that 609. And I like that 609 because to me that was a bit of a clearer area earlier, just with regards to where we had previous consolidation and then that lower low. Uh, alas, you know, things alas. happen and you just, <laughs> alas, word that, of the day. Word. We just have to be um, aware, be cognizant of what's going on. Um, I'm trying to take out some profit on the, that path back down to 610 because I don't know if we're going to make another lower low here, but I want to be prepared because uh, that 611 break, I think what, it looks like we're trying to break 611. I would love if we do. Other than that, still in the AXP short. Uh, I've been over this. I, you know, I don't want to bore people with the AXP short. It is still shorting. And um, we're, we're being patient and hanging Can out. Can I tell you what American there? Express did to me on my vacation in No, the you did not. So I went to Hawaii. I went to uh, Waikiki, Honolulu in the summer. And I, I was like, I have my credit cards, right? So yeah. I was like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, use some stuff on my Amex because I got a lot of good points on my Amex Why not? card. Yeah. I, had to, I was telling this to Brendo. And then I did a big purchase, right? And then I get a text message and an email simultaneously from Amex telling me, They've lowered my credit limit from whatever it was, I'm not gonna say what it was, down to about like $200 buffer where I was. I'm like, what the bad word, right? What the Why heck? Why are you doing this to me midday? Yeah. Like I don't have bad credit, I have excellent credit, always paid my bills on time, this, that, and the other. I get back from vacation, I call them, I'm like, what did you guys do, Yeah. right? Like, oh, it was an automatic system generated, because uh, basically what they were doing is they were worried that credit, their, their credit loss provisions were going through the roof. So this algo, this automatic algo, started reducing people's credit limits automatically. I ended up getting not only a credit limit, but I got an upgraded card for free for a couple of years for that. Shout out to the Katina man. Um, but yeah, that was the reason I'm telling you this story is because they are very quick to make sure they don't go in the red, right? Like they don't want to be on that side where they they don't see the credit cycle ahead of time and they ended up getting slapped with all these high loan loss provisions. Yeah, it's at so. the expense of the, the user experience, you're right, so they, they sacrifice their bottom line yeah. over, over your experience, yes. which is, um, thank you for, yeah, thank you for sharing that story. Uh, that, that's, especially if you're on a trip and you find that out and you're like, like where's my money? Yeah, 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 I'm sitting there and I, I, like, I just made like one quick purchase and then a text message and email on my phone simultaneously. It's like, what the hell is going on here? A <laughs> long Sharif credit score. <laughs> Look at Noli says, I like that. Yes, yes, something that I pride myself in. I'll tell you that. Uh, did you enjoy Hawaii? I've been wanting to go. Let me tell you, uh, I loved Waikiki. It was one of my favorite, like, beach vacations. Like, I, have, I like my explore, exploring vacations are different. Beach vacations, I categorize differently. It was my favorite, but I got to tell you, very, very expensive, very pricey. You have to add two or one and a half to everything. I'm talking about food, I'm talking about excursions, you name it, everything is more expensive out there. From Starbucks to whatever, everything. So you gotta be, you gotta wrap your mind around that. Down go the futures again, Adara. The Katina man is on a print factory over there. He's hitting those bangs. We go right back down. We got back to 17.7, yeah, 17.550, and Hwadunk we go. 
right back into that lower end of the range, 17.5 mid-teens here, Adara, as we are very much near that low end of the range. Oh, yeah, no, and I like, look how we're holding that line, too. Like, that, that that's a crazy yeah. look, like that that chop and churn. And certain, so many things, just holding levels here. We got another dump, and so we left um, we left American Express. We cashed out um, <laughs> to the uh, upside, or I guess we, we fell down, but, you know, positive on this trade here. I have to say, um, I also said, like, in the chat, I was saying, I took a deep breath because I'm out video. I did, I have to admit, I probably should have set my stops a little differently, or I guess my outs a little differently. I just wasn't prepared for us to fall as much as we did. I was trying to look for just above that 610 area because I know that's where we were having a really hard time. We had that really sharp bounce up earlier here. Uh, so I took out everything probably a little bit early, but just because that dump was so unexpected, I turned back around and I'm like, oh my gosh, we're falling. But yeah, congrats to anybody who was in this trade. Uh, still in the Sims, this was a paper trade, just learning and growing. I have to say, this has been a pretty eventful trading day as well. A couple mixed miss trades, but but some some positives as well. And I think it goes back to something Neil said that I really appreciated earlier today, basically just talking about how, uh, you know, I guess he's talking about Square and why he wanted to trade that. Right. Because it didn't go at, you know, there, the previous day, some things happened, right? And I think okay. I think I kind of took that as a learning experience. Like every day is going to be different. Yes. And as Neil was saying, you know, you mentioned in Groundhog Day, right? You're not going to have the same trading day every day. I think it's really just rolling with the punches. And the market did slap me in the face a little bit today. <laughs> uh, or... And also this whole week, this, yeah, yesterday was one of my, my worst days in a while, but I think it's just about getting back up and, and trying to, to keep going with it. And I just, you know, I want to say that because I think there's probably a lot of other people, um, you know, learning as well, hopefully. Um, and I hope, you know, hopefully you get something out of this because I think it's, it's certainly quite a journey always when you're trying to trade. I couldn't agree more, Adara. And, and a good attitude to have, by the way. Appreciate that. Um, Neil is in the chat trolling me here. Antigua over Hawaii. Look, he loves where he comes from, and I completely respect that. I have never been to the latter, and in no way am I shamelessly plugging the beautiful island of Antigua with 365 beaches, one for every day of the year. Uh, that's definitely going to be on my hit list. Antigua, I definitely have to make a stop there. Shout out to Neil. It is on my hit list. Uh, bucket list. I hit list, bucket <laughs> list. Leave me alone. Long Antigua from <laughs> it's the South. Friday Korea. afternoon. Oh Cut me some slack. Kurt Hoffman, have you ever been to Aruba? Yes. The last family vacation that my parents took me on, and they swore they would never take me on another vacation after that, and that was ended up being true. I've never gone on vacation with my parents. It was when I graduated high school. My sister and I both went, and we took my grandma, and my parents swore to never go on vacation with us again after that day, and they've held true to that. It was a good <laughs> vacation for us. My parents didn't really like it. You guys can figure out probably why there. <laughs> But Andrew Ditter um, is a buy now, pay always dude. Sad to see Amex has no faith in the burpee king of day trade the world. Shout out to you. I think it was just the algo, my man. And I did kind of forgive them after that. And I do have my, my Amex card here and I use it for, uh, for some stuff. But, you know, it was really disappointing to see that they did that. Because it shows you that there, it lacks the human element there in the company that you'd want to see. I mean, everybody wants to be treated like a person and not a number. And so with, uh, I can completely agree with you uh, there. <laughs> Ram Ram in the chat, I'm just protecting Sheree from getting canceled. Thank you, Ram Ram. Um, all right there. Bruh. Oh, wow, Neil, eh? You're, you're gonna go that hard. Neil's going hard in the chat there. <laughs> I'm not even reading really there a lot. Have you ever been to the motherland, Omaha, Nebraska? No, I haven't. Have you been to Omaha? I have not been to Omaha. I said I... Omaha because of Peyton Manning. Oh, that's why you Omaha, said Omaha. Omaha. I you didn't remember that? Omaha. That's so random. That was like the the OG. Here we go. Oh yeah, because that. Okay, I forgot. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. No, I was not wow. aware of that. He was from Omaha. Um, also, I think it's so funny. Uh, Neil and I making the same Beach Boys reference in the chat. <laughs> Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I want to take you. Neil did it much song. more creatively than I did it. Love I just kind of directly song. quoted it. But I mean, um, yeah, great line there. Shout out to um, the Beach Boys. And certainly this market has been very wavy. I'm uh, trying to ride the waves of the market today. Here we go. Also, AMD. <laughs> um, I think Jameson in the chat was saying AMD. And look, at AMD, congrats on this story. I didn't get to look at this earlier. The market was doing market things. Mm. But look at that fall off, that 170. I was saying I think VWAP owns 178. It's interesting. But AMD is like, nah, I'm actually going to be a little bit more interesting just below VWAP at that 177.70. Once, twice, 
thrice rejection Obi here thrice. to the downside. Yeah, shout out to Obi. Um, let's see what we do with that 160, uh, 17650. Kind of um, a little bit of a, a random um, uh, level, you might think, but I, I do like the, the fact we had some consolidation here earlier in the pre. We had a really nice, um, wow. I, not really rounded bottom, but we had a little bit of chop and turn before flying back up here around um, 1240, 1230 to one. So certainly I think an area that could be of interest here, but the fact that that would be wall project was very clean. So we're gonna have to look here. Um, Stevie B, the Beach Boise from Idaho. I'm just gonna clap for that because I really enjoyed that. What do they call him? The the Oracle from Omaha. The Warren Oracle Buffett. from Omaha. Yeah, 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 Warren Buffett. We're talking about people from Warren. Omaha. I forgot about Warren. Yeah, yeah. Well, Uncle Warren. He's like the biggest of the names. Forget about Peyton Manning. It's Uncle Warren. This is a right. this is a trading show. Oh, there he is, my man, oh, no. Uncle Warren. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I've never seen him excited either. So for him to have his hands on his head like that is very unusual for yeah, guys. Yeah, he's like, what is this? Coca-Cola. I know. Buy more Coke. By the way, I heard that Coca-Cola's chart has been looking a lot better than uh, what we talked about earlier, um, or sorry, in later stages of 2023 when that hit piece came out from the bear cave uh, with respect to the GLPs and Coke's, you know, oh, business yeah, model. Nice. Remember that? Yeah. Look at that V-shaped recovery. Is Ooh. that the daily? That is no, the no, daily. No. That's a daily? Yeah. There you go. There you go. That's exactly what people were talking about. That makes a whole lot of sense to me. So I don't know, but that, that is great, great call there, Adair. Look at that resistance level, guys. Previous flat bottom break. Now we are topping out at that resistance level. Great, great eye there, Adair. Thank you. Yeah, I like I like that you can just drop. Like, we we, we, we know resistance in the oh, yeah. over here. Thank you for, yeah, for because I was like, I don't want to, I'm just going to draw the line. But yeah, I think that 60, um, Partway between 60 and 60, we'll say 60, 25 area could certainly be of interest um, there. So I think, um, yeah, like Coca-Cola, shout out to Mr. Buffett there. Mm -hmm. I'm having a buffet with this, this Coke side <laughs> shirt to the upside. Also, congrats to Joanna Brewster, Tesla $2 Club. Woo, we're How's gonna, PayPal going? It's going well, we're, but like I'm going to complain. I'm going to complain because 62 is not giving me the breakout. So I've been wetting my beak, Adara. Every time we ascend into 62 or thereabouts, a, a bit above, a bit below, I'm wetting my beak, de-risking here. The point is, though, we're still making higher lows on PYPL, up over 2%, but that $62 level, the shorts are getting real aggressive anytime we ascend at or near 62. But they're not aggressive enough to bring down the price action to make a new low. They're not. So here we go again. We're doing that dance uh, at 62 bucks. As you can see here, I've got a couple of beak wetters that have gone <laughs> unfilled the entire entirety of the show. These beak wetters were put on right as we got on onto the show. I got into PayPal. So I've been in PayPal for almost three hours now. And these ones have not filled. So, so aggressive have been the sellers at 62. Look at this. We're 61.98, 61.99, and we really can't break through that 62 level. Uh, I'm not getting out of this trade because it has not given me a reason to get out. It hasn't printed those lower, newer lows. But you know what is printing newer lows? It goes by the name of NQ. Ooh. Or the triple Qs. Hit it, Katina, man. There you go. Look at this. Look how low we have been going here. It's been incrementally coming back down. I saw Saad Mahmoud in the chat saying he's like, this market really wants to flush. I couldn't agree with you more, Saad. Even these two pops over here into 17,550, that 50 point level, all of them rejecting and the making of a newer low coming in there. The only saving grace is really this, 90, this 805 candle. I always mistake that because it's central time. This 805 candle brought us down to 17,504. That is the low for today. We haven't printed that low. This candle over here is the lowest, and that's 17,506. So we're still at two points above that previous hammer candle low that we haven't been able to uh, get below. So watching that, CRBP. Remember this one, small cap gapper? This was excellent today. This Ooh. gave you multiple opportunities. It was kind of bamboozling at times, especially that time it got into 40 bucks uh, or thereabouts, four, four pennies south of 40 bucks. This reversal candle, this kind of spinning top candle over here, absolutely chwadunked and took us back down to 31. But since that time, we've been ascending and we just got a 37 touch. And as quickly I set, as I said, we got a 37 touch, we shot right back down to 35. This shows you how bamboozling 
this, tr uh, this trade is and how wide the spreads are. Let's have a look at the spreads on CRBP because it plays to show you. Let me move over here. Where is it? There it is. Look at this. Look at this. It's 50 penny spread on a, on a $35 name. That, you know, especially on a, on a small cap gapper, it's not, a, it's not like a large cap that you can really kind of feel a little bit more confident holding. No, this is really one of the, the dangerous trades. And when you have this kind of spread on this type of name, you know, to me, I can't take this with any size and to be able to manage risk. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to let this one go. PayPal, still 61 mid 90s. I think too, like I'm, I'm looking at this and I have to say like, A, I think congrats on this trade, but B, I think the more, the longer we're having this other step up, the more I'm like, I think if it breaks out, it, it'll be really good, a really nice look here too, right? Cause I mean, look at how long it's been like just working. Like the more I look at this, the more I'm like, like this, this I think when this breaks, it will break with a viciousness. I'm hoping so. I, yeah, I'm good. We're going to speak it into uh, existence. It's there not going to be helpium. It's going to be self-actualization on uh, this chat. Cause I mean, I mean also too, like, I think too, it, it's, it's not hopium when the chart is as you said it's still valid it's been valid yeah higher highs higher lows curling towards that 62 area so i think you know sometimes i've noticed the longer something uh takes to to come to fruition as long as it holds levels mind you right. sometimes the more powerful it is and i do want to talk Good about point. nvidia with regards to that because nvidia i was getting really nervous but every time we failed that 611.50 i was like you know we got to stay in we got to stay in right so i'm happy you know happy it worked out because i that that's what gave me that faith and of course then once we did decisively break out of that that trend and drop below 611 we fell with the viciousness so i mean i've obviously no two charts are like nothing is going to ever move the same way i also think though the fact that paypal is up two percent in the day uh, in a market that's generally trending down really nice side uh, anyway sorry i just wanted to, to address that and i yeah, think congrats dang. to you on that trade i think it's a really nice look uh, and i would be pleased as punch you want to have a look at the market here because we're about to touch 16.5 okay sorry 17.5 we're awfully close um, oh, you, I forget you. Uh, you don't have the MNQ. Let me put it up there. I, Thank I you. I appreciate that. I would um, love. Yeah, I would like to look at it. I just do not have. Look the at MNQ. this move down here on the future. Down we go again. Long consolidation here, where we had some support at that 17.515. That's now acting as resistance, and it looks like we are on our way down to touch 17.5. The only question here is, do we find support at that 100 point level? You know how much I love these 100 point levels. On the, on the NQ and the ES, do we find some support here or do we wait, do the wick dance, right, from the top side so that we could bounce off 17.5? Or the bears, I know Kyle Burdett's probably salivating at that 17.5 break to the downside. Shout out to big Kyle Burdett. I mean, we'll have to wait and see, but the market has been in a steady state decline today, basically since we got that Apple news that they were, the EU was displeased with uh, their new, App Store changes, that came around 11.30 or so. Apple started tanking off that 194 and a half top that it had been at, and it brought, single-handedly was able to bring the market down. I also want to shout out Microsoft for absolutely tanking as well off that 406 top, and it got all the way down to 402. This is that simultaneous move with, well, not simultaneous move with Apple. Apple started tanking 11.35, and Softy started tanking at 12.20. Uh, Tesla has been weak all day. What's up? Your PayPal's breaking up. Ooh, and, or okay. it's trying to. Let's Sorry, have a just... look at PYPL. Thank you for uh, alerting me to that. It, it fell back a little bit now. But what a surprise. Yeah. I, I surprise. didn't want to speak too soon. I'm sorry. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've, I've been dealing with this for three hours, That's true. right? The it. break above 62 and then the move down below. Guys, flat top, 62. If it does... If it doesn't materialize today, Katina, man, I'm hoping it materializes on Monday for a nice trade through that 62 top. Yeah, this has been, uh, yeah, like lots of stuff to look at in the market. Yeah, I just noticed Microsoft as well. So thank you for pointing that one out. Yes, ma'am. Um, not a micro short here if you got this one in the move down. Also sort of that, what we're talking about, the top and tail candle, where you do see that big move. Um, we have that, you know, buyers finally overwhelmed, last hurrah, and then we swoop to the downside here. And we fell significantly from just shy of 406 to that 403 area that we coiled back up for another move to the downside. What a uh, what a look down here, Microsoft. Also want to look at Tesla again for quite a few people in the chat. I know Joanna Brewster, congrats to you. Jameson mentioning Tesla falling. I will say though, I'd be cognizant of this little uh, Tesla trying to get another another move up at this 182.40. However, take that with a grain of salt, perhaps, or um, you know, with just a skosh of Model Y, because I it didn't work as well as it did in my head. <laughs> because we definitely do have some sellers getting. Um, 
you know, overwhelmed here, right? We do have these wicks to the downside. Ooh. Getting beaten, eaten back up by buyers could be a bit of a reversal. That being said, we are still consistently seeing lower high, higher, uh, lower high and lower low. And it would be like a while for us to see a higher high. We'd have to eclipse that 183.50. So that's going to be almost a dollar. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think the chance of that happening may be a bit more slim, but I would be aware of that. I think generally really nice range move to the downside here. I'm kind of sad I didn't get in on this earlier, but I was a little bit held up trying to um, keep American Express in check. Um, so yeah, I did get out of the rest of that trade. Basically, I noticed we're forming a bit of the bottom at that 190, uh, 970 area. So I took one, two profits here. We're back at VWAP, which is the area I did reload this because it kept falling down here from the downside. So if you're, if you're looking at American Express, I think that trend could be of interest. This one likes getting into ranges and then falling out of them with the swiftness. That's what we did earlier. Broke up. That swift got... thing. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Then we got back into that range. It took advantage of the range, and then the range slapped me in the face. But that's what the market does. You know what I mean? I, you guys can roll. Face slapper. Yeah, as that Sean animation is, right? And I think the thing is, too, you just have, someone was saying the market's been really choppy. And I think, honestly, I feel very honored to be able to learn yes, in likewise. the sim, especially in this market that has been so crazy because, you know, you know it's a little bit harder harder to trade it's probably a bit easier to learn when it's when it's moving smoothly right and so i think that's paypal we got the beak wetter we got the beak wetter at 6205 finally that came to fruition the beak wetter at 610 though adara hasn't triggered quite yet but uh you know we're, i'm gonna leave this trade on i'm gonna leave this trade on because if we really get decisive here with a 62 hold it could be interesting going into the, the rest of the afternoon, especially if the market starts trending higher. And you know what we did get? We got a 17.5 bounce right now. So we dipped into 17.5. We're popping back up into 20s. But you're not going to catch me in a futures long uh, today or right now because, you know, I don't want to guess whether or not we're going to bounce off 17.5. But for the moment, we are. We, we are for the moment. We'll have to wait and see what the rest of the afternoon brings. There's a minute left on the show. Adara and I will see you guys next week. We are going to be talking about gaps, but I think that there's only so there are only three days we can do on gaps. There's yeah. initiation gaps, continuation, and exhaustion. The other two days we'll find a different thing for. I'll send it to you. Yeah, I mean, so excited to be here as always. Thank you so much to everybody in the chat for coming out and being so supportive. We love, um, you know, making these trades, talking through trades, hopefully, and finding some examples of stuff in the wild. Gaps will be very interesting because there are different types. Oh, yeah. And as always, if anyone sees an in the wild example, we, we you know, we definitely want to talk about it. Um, thank you so much to Bears versus Bulls, as always, being awesome in the chat. Thank you, uh, Vin, everybody, for your support. Uh, we love being here, and we're very excited to bring it back next week, but we are getting close to 2 o'clock, so it looks like we will have to see you next Monday at the same bad time, and in fact, the same... Oh, oh. Actually, not yet, though. He is not, not quite ready. Yet. We He's will in front of me. Apologize, so. fake out yeah. there. Spoiler alert there, I guess, on that move. Um, yeah, psych, there we go. That's the normal. Thank you so much, Sean. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we... We're, we're kind of getting into the swing of things over here. Uh, apologies for that fake out or psych, as Sean put it there. Um, but now we are rounding up. We are winding down, <laughs> I believe. And are we good to go? Yeah, we're, we're, oh, keep going. Okay, no worries. Also, yeah, so I want to clarify some people were like, I was saying, you know, grain of Model Y. I guess Model Y was the salt. Robbie V was saying Electron. But either way, we are going to now see you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Brendan's at the big desk, guys. Episode. Okay. Hey guys, yeah, welcome back in. A couple hours <laughs> left on a uh, Friday afternoon.